السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم افتح علينا فتح العارفين يا أرحم الراحمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تدى إن شاء الله We will be starting a new series, uh, inshallah, uh, to cover surat, the tafsir of Surah Al-Kahf. So uh, we all know that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ قَرَأَ سُورَةَ الْكَهْفِ فِي يَوْمِ الْجُمُعَةِ أَضَاءَ لَهُ مِنَ النُّورِ مَا بَيْنَ الْجُمُعَتَيْنِ Whoever reads Surah Al-Kahf on Friday, then light shall shine forth for him between the two Fridays. Surah Al-Kahf is one of the uh, uh, so much repeated and read surah in the, in the, uh, in the Quran. People like to read it uh, always on uh, Yawm Al-Jumu'ah, on uh, Friday. So uh, now when we uh, go through the surah, we would realize how amazing this, this surah is. Surah Al-Kahf is a Mecca surah, and we know that when we say Mecca surah, we mean that it was revealed before migrating to Medina. Uh, it is um, a surah of uh, 110 ayahs, and it's in the middle of the Quran. Uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also says من حفظ عشر آيات من أول سورة الكهف عصم من الدجال and some narrations say من حفظ العشر الأواخر من سورة الكهف عصم من الدجال which means that whoever memorizes the first ten uh, verses or the first 10 ayahs or the last 10 ayahs in other narrations of Surah Al-Kahf, then he will be protected from a dajjal when, when uh, at the end of time he will be uh, um, sent and um, he will try to uh, make people go astray and uh, only the believers will read the three letters Kaf, Ra, uh, Kaf, Fa and Ra, which form the word Kathara, which means is not a believer. So the, that these three letters will be on uh, will be written on his forehead, but only the believers will know will will be able to read it. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam urged us to to memorize the first ten ayahs or the last ten ayahs of the surah. And uh, Subhanallah, they are easy to memorize. So um, uh, we can uh, memorize them, inshallah, and it will be easier, much easier now after we know the meaning of these uh, ayahs. Uh, if we want to talk about the reason why the surah was revealed, uh, we know that Quraysh uh, used to belie Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with, uh, when he told them about Islam and uh, he told them about the new religion, they, they would not believe him. They did not want to believe him. So they tried their best to keep him away from this religion, but they uh, failed. They tried their best to, to give him anything that he might desire, anything that he might want, and, but again, they failed. So they wanted to know exactly if he is a true messenger or not, a true prophet or not. So Quraysh sent two of their uh, people, Al-Nadr ibn al-Harith and Uqba ibn Abi Ma'iyat. They sent these two people to Medina, to the uh, scholars, to the Jew scholars. So they wanted to, to ask. So let's now add, it's a hadith. I will read the hadith and translate it for you. 
بعث قريش النضر بن الحارث وعقبة بن أبي معيط إلى أحبار يهود أي إلى علماء يهود بالمدينة So Quraysh sent these people, these two people to this, uh, the scholars in Medina, the Jewish scholars فقالوا لهم They said to them سلوهم عن محمد Ask them about Muhammad وصفوا لهم لهم صفته Describe him, who he is. وأخبروهم بقوله And tell them what he claims, what he says. فإنهم أهل الكتاب الأول So those scholars are the people of book uh, uh, who, who got the uh, revelation. وعندهم ما ليس عندنا من علم الأنبياء And they know about prophets uh, what we do not know. فخرجا حتى قدما المدينة So those uh, another and عقبة left until they reached مدينة فسألوا أحبار يهود عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم So they asked those scholars about Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم ووصفوا لهم أمره They described him وبعد قوله and some of what he says قال إنكم أهل التوراة So another and عقبة told them, told the scholars إنكم أهل التوراة You are the people who received the, the revelation of التوراة وقد جئناكم لتخبرونا عن صاحبنا هذا And we are Uh, and we came to you just so that you tell us about who this person is. They're talking about Sayyidina Muhammad. قال فقالت لهم So the scholars said سلوه عن ثلاث نأمركم بهن Ask him about three things we are going to tell you. فإن أخبركم بهن فهو نبي If he answers your three questions, which we are going to tell you, then he is a prophet. وَإِن لَمْ يَفْعَلْ فَالرَّجُلُ متقول. But if he didn't answer, then his words, he will be a liar. فَرُوا فِيهِ رَأْيَكُمْ So do whatever you want and... Uh, um, Uh, he is a liar, you do whatever you want with him. So, سلوه عن فتية ذهبوا في الدهر الأول Ask him about the young men who uh, left their homes and uh, ran away. So now they are asking asking about the young men of the cave. So ask him, ما كان من أمرهم? Why did they do that? What's their story? فإنهم قد كان لهم حديث عجيب. Because they had a strange story. وسلوه عن رجل طواف بلغ مشارق الأرض ومغاربها. And ask him about a man who reached the, uh, the east and the west of the earth. And they are asking about the Qarnayn. Ma kana nabao? Ask him about, about his story. Wasaluhu ani ruh. And ask him about, about the spirit. Wasaluhu ani ruh. So now, Uh, if he, فإن أخبركم بذلك فإن أخبركم بذلك نعم ف, ف, فهو نبي فاتبعوه So if he uh, answers your questions then he is a prophet and you follow him So If, if, he, if he, وَإِن لَمْ يُخْبِرْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ رَجُلٌ مُتَقَوِّلٌ But if he didn't answer you, then he is a liar. فَاصْنَعُوا فِي أَمْرِهِ مَا بَدَا لَكُمْ So do whatever you want with him. This is what we 
what what questions you have to ask him. So another an Uqba came back to Quraysh. فقال يا معشر قريش قد جئناكم بفصل ما بينكم وبين محمد. And they told Quraysh, okay, we came to you with what will be the uh, uh, turning point. What will be the point that will tell you uh, who Muhammad is? قد أخبرنا أحبار يهود أن نسأله عن أمور. We, uh, the scholars, the Jews scholars, asked us to, uh, to ask him about certain things. So they told them about, about these things. So they came to Sayyidina Muhammad. They said to, to Sayyidina Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, akhbirna. We are here to ask you some questions and we want answers. فسألوه عما أمروهم به. So they asked Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم about what they were asked. فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أخبركم غدا ولم يستثني فانصرفوا عنه. So he told them I will tell you tomorrow. ولم يستثني means he did not say إن شاء الله. And so they left. ومكث رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خمسة عشر ليلة خمسة عشرة ليلة لا يحدث الله إليه في ذلك. So سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم stayed fifteen days, fifteen nights, and he is not being said a word from Allah سبحانه وتعالى. ولا يأتيه جبريل and جبريل did not come to him. He was not sent to him. And the people of Mecca started to talk now. And they said, Muhammad promised us to tell us the uh, to give us the answers the next day, and now it's 15 nights and we haven't been told. He didn't tell us anything. And Sayyidina Muhammad felt sorry that he, he was so saddened that the the Jibreel alayhi salam is not coming to him. 15 nights. وشق عليه ما يتكلم به أهل مكة. And what people of مكة are talking hurt him. Then جبريل عليه السلام came. ثم جاءه جبريل عليه السلام من عند الله عز وجل بسورة أصحاب الكهف. So جبريل عليه السلام came with the سورة الكهف uh, to, to tell him. فيها معاتبته إياه على حزنه عليهم Replementing Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم that he felt sorry for them, that he felt sad for them لأنه تأخر عليهم because he was late for them, telling them وخبر ما سألوه عنه من أمر الفتية والرجل الطواف and the surah, of course, told him, told him about the story of the uh, Ashab al-Kahf, the people of the cave, and the Zul Qarnayn. And also, it came down with the ayah, the, fir, the ayah 85 of Surah Al Isra, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Wes Alunaka and your Ruh, Poly Ruhum in Emri Robbi, Wama Utitum in Al Elmi Illa Kalila. Sorry. And they ask you, O oh Muhammad, about the soul. Say, the soul is of the affair of my Lord. And mankind have not been given of knowledge except a little. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala implemented Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he didn't say inshallah when he said I will tell you tomorrow. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in uh, Surah Al-Kahf وَلَا تَقُولَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ إِنِّي فَاعِلٌ ذَلِكَ غَدًا إلا أن يشاء الله 
واذكر ربك إذا نسيت وقل عسى أن يهديني ربي لأقرب من هذا رشدا So uh, never say indeed I will do tomorrow unless except you have to add if Allah wills and remember you Lord when you, when you forget when you forget to say it perhaps my Lord will guide me to what is nearer than this to the right conduct so this is the reason why Surah al kahf was revealed now if we want to talk about uh, uh, the uh, the topics in the surah we have uh, we can divide the surah into several topics, uh, several uh, uh, ayahs, several groups. From ayah one to ayah eight, <clears throat> it's about thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, giving glad, glad tidings, and warning people. Ayah nine to 27 is the story of the people of the cave. Ayah 29, 28 to 31 urging uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, urging people to practice patience. Ayah 32 to 44, the story of the uh, uh, two gardens, the people of the two gardens. From 45 to 46, it's the uh, telling the, uh, the secret of what is really staying what is really accompanying a person to, to the life after. And from 47 to 49, uh, signs of Yawm uh, al uh, the day of judgment, just some, some points of uh, some pictures of the day of judgment. 50 to 59, uh, it's the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, uh, certain ways of uh, uh, Yani, um, giving, uh, uh, destroying the non-believers and the transgressors. From 60 to 89, uh, 82, the story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam with Al-Khadr alayhi salam. 83 to 99, the story of Dhul Qarnayn. 100 to 110, the glad tiding, uh, the uh, warning, and the affirming of the wahi Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam. So Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim We start insha'Allah with the first ayah now. Alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitab wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja. So all praise is due to Allah who has sent down upon his servant the book and has not made therein any deviance. If we go back to the last ayah of the previous surah, Surah Al-Isra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended the surah with وَقُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ until the end of the, of the, um, the ayah. And say praise to Allah. So, قُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ وَقُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ Allah started the next surah so Surah Al-Isra is the previous Surah. Now so Surah Al-Isra ended with وَقُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ Surah Al-Kahf started with, started with الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ Allah also started Surah Al-Kahf with الْحَمْد Praising, praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ is the, the, uh, the way that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said uh, when he talked about the best of the words. He said, Subhanallah walhamdulillah. Subhanallah is just to, 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 to say that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is the one, no one like him. He didn't have a child. He didn't, uh, there is uh, no one to, uh, he, to help him. Nothing. No one likes him. Nothing. 
So this is subhanallah. Alhamdulillah, we say alhamdulillah to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all his blessings, for all whatever he gave us. In fact, in the Quran, there are five surahs that start with alhamdulillah. The first one is Surah Al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praises due to Allah, the Lord of all that exists. The second one is Surah Al-An'am. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with Alhamdulillahi alladhi khalaqa as-samawati wal-arda wa ja'ala al-zulumati wal-nur. All praise is due to Allah who created the heavens and the earth and made the darkness and the light. The third surah is Surah Al-Kahf when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with Alhamdulillahi alladhi anzal ala abdihi al-kitaba wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja. All praise is due to Allah who has sent down upon his servant the book without any deviance in it. The fourth surah is Surah Al-Sabah. Alhamdulillahi alladhi lahu ma fi al-samawati wa ma fi al-ardi wa lahu alhamdu fi al-akhirah. All praise is due to Allah, to whom belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. And to him belongs all the praise in the hereafter. And the last surah that starts with Alhamdulillah is Surah Fatir. Alhamdulillahi Fatir is Samawati wal Ardi Jaili al Malaikati Rusulan Uli Ajnihatin Mathna wa Thulatha wa Ruba'a. All praise is due to Allah, creator of the heavens and the earth, who made an, the angels, the angel messengers, having wings two or three or four. So five surahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started with alhamdulillah. However, each one of these surahs each uh, one of this phrase, Alhamdulillah, has a different meaning than the other. Or a different uh, uh, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something different than what is in the other surah. So in Surah, uh, in, uh, surah Al-Fatiha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. He created everything. He is the Lord of all that exists. He's the one who, who gave them the blessings. In Surah Al-An'am, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi khalaqa as-samawati wal-arda wa ja'ala al-zulumati wal-nur. Allah created, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created the, the heavens, who created the earth and darkness and light. So all these are signs of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the skies and the earth have everything that people need for their life. And the darkness and light are of the blessings because when, uh, as, as, as the darkness has, a, has something, has a role, the same thing, the light has a role also. Both darkness and, and, and light are complete each other because light there there is movement in light there is going there is trying to get sustenance there is there is uh, a lot of action going on in light and darkness has tranquility resting and no one can do anything if he is not trusted So a whole universe with darkness by itself will not benefit. A whole universe with light by itself is not enough. There should be both light and darkness. So we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for creating both light and darkness. And now we come to Surah Al-Kahf. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started with Alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitab Alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitab wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja 
So Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the book, the Quran to his servant, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, and look at the word, ala abdihi. Ala abdihi. So this is why we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for sending down the Quran, al-kitab. So what is the Quran? The Quran is the book that has all the instructions, that has all the rules, that has a complete program for a successful life. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah for sending this program, for this, sending these instructions. And Allah said in Surah Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahman allama al-Qur'an khalaq al-insan. So, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set the way, set the rules. And after that, he created man. So the one who invents a machine, before he invents the machine, he knows what function this machine will do, what tasks, what duties. He will, he will uh, know exactly when to do the maintenance uh, uh, to keep this machine running in, uh, in good condition. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended down this Quran, which is the law that the humans have to follow in order to live happily. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah that he, he gave us this program, that he gave us this, uh, uh, these instructions. Now, what does the word Alhamdulillah mean? The word Alhamdulillah in Arabic has three meanings. Thana, shukr, madah. Praise, thanking, and talking good. So the meanings are so close together, but there is a difference. Thana, because when when uh, you you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is shukr. Shukr, if someone does something special for you, something, he, gave, he made something good specially for you, not for any other person, then you thank him. You yourself thank him. The other creations will not think about, about it. They might not know about it even. So this is shukr. Shukr is to thank someone for doing something specially for you. But alhamd is for, uh, is thanking for a blessing, a blessing that is for you and for others. It's not specially for you. This is the difference, the, uh, the difference between thana and shukr and alhamd. Okay? So, al madih might be, um, you might praise something, you might talk good about something, but that thing will not give you anything uh, yani in return. When you say, oh, this is a nice cup, you are praising this cup. You're talking good about this cup. But the cup is, you might use it for uh, to drink water, no, but it's not something specially for you. It's not something that you are the only one who will benefit from. Now, if we go back, if we go back to the word Alhamdulillah, 
Alhamdulillah will mean that this thing, we are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for, for anything, for everything that he has created. So if someone does something for you, you thank him. But if you think about it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made that thing do this thing that he did for you that you thanked him for. So if you have a chain, you thanked this man, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him do what he did for you, then you are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah started the surah with Alhamdulillah. This is a form that we all say. The literate and the illiterate say Alhamdulillah. The poet, the engineer, the doctor, the healthy, the sick, everyone says Alhamdulillah. The young, the old, everyone. And even though we say, we say the same thing that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma inna la nuhsi thana'an alayka anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. Ya Allah, no matter how hard we thank you, we still cannot thank you, we still cannot praise you the way you deserve to be praised. So we have to keep thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gave us all the blessings that we, that we have. He created us. He perfected us. He proportioned us. We take, we take our health for granted. If someone has a headache, then he will know what it means to live without a headache. When someone uh, has an accident and uh, something happens to him, broke a ha uh, a ha his hand, he say, Alhamdulillah, it was only the hand, it wasn't my back. So even in bad situations, we say, we say Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah in the good, Alhamdulillah in the bad. Alhamdulillah for whatever good we have. Alhamdulillah for whatever bad we, we, we are tested with. We say, alhamdulillah, that our test was not in our faith. Ya Rabb, keep our faith. Keep us on the, on the right path. Keep us following Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We say, alhamdulillah, he gave us children. We have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessing by raising our children the right way by preparing the right environment for our children, by, by helping our children stay on the right path, by choosing their good companions. This is a manna that we have. It's a blessing, but we have to, to, to know how to deal with it. There are so many things nowadays, so many arrows that are hit against our children. Whether in belief, whether in aqidah, whether in ideas, everything around us is a test with these children. We should be careful how to raise our children. We should as parents keep asking Allah and keep praying for the safety of the heart of our, our children. Ya Allah, we ask you to give us and to give our children sound hearts, Ya Allah. And we thank you that you are allowing us to make prayers, Ya Allah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, الذي أنزل أنزل على عبده الكتاب. 
So he sent down upon his servant the book and look at the word servant. In Surah Al-Isra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Subhana alladhi asra bi'abdihi laylan min al-masjid al-harami ila al-masjid al-aqsa. Exalted is he who took his servant by night from al-masjid al-haram to al-masjid al-aqsa. So when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a true servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah elevated him to, 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 into the skies to meet him. He was sincere in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was so patient in uh, 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 the tests that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested him with. So Allah, Allah rewarded him that he took him up to the skies. And when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was up in, in with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gave him gifts for us. The last three ayahs of Surah Al-Baqarah and the prayers, the five prayers. And remember that prayers were 50. And when he went down, he met Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. And he said, what happened? He said, Allah gave me prayers, 50 prayers from my ummah. He said, no, 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 your ummah will not be able to do it. Just go back up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him to lessen that number. So he kept sending him back and forth, back and forth until we have five prayers. Now five prayers, Imagine if they were 50 with everything around us in the, uh, during the day, with all our work, with all our jobs, with all our responsibilities. Imagine the 50, 50 prayers. We have five prayers. And are we performing the prayers or are we just praying? What's the difference? Praying is just... To do the prayer, to to uh, to to do the qiyam, ruku', sujood, uh, and that's it. Just the form of the prayer. But our head is thinking of uh, the uh, what to eat today, where to go. Uh, are the kids still sleeping? Did they come back? Well, this is praying. But in the Quran, wa salah, wa yuqimun salah, performing the prayer. This is the gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Al-Isra wal Mi'raj, in the night journey. So when we pray, we have to be present in our prayer. We have to have khushu' in our prayer. We have to remember always that we are standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to prepare ourselves to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, renew your wudu. Even if you, are, uh, if you have wudu, renew it. It's light upon light. Say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem before you, you, you start your prayer. You will outcast a shaitan. Say, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. By, by the power of Allah, I'm going to, to be with Allah. So get yourself prepared to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what you do before the prayer. What about in the prayer? And try to focus on the meaning of what you are, what, of the verses you are, you are re reciting. So this is what you have to do during the prayer. Recite new uh, surahs that you memorized. This will keep you aware of your prayer. This will keep you connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your prayer. So Allah gave, gave Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this gift. We are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this gift. Allah gave the, the Quran to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We say, alhamdulillah. 
الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب We thank Allah for sending down the book ولم يجعل له عوجا So there is no deviance in the Quran It leads to the straight path And we know that the straight line is the shortest line If we are going uh, If we are walking a long distance walk Then we take the straight line We don't go right and left, right and left We want to be there at the uh, shortest time possible الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدن So this Quran he has, Allah made it straight to warn severe punishment لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدن from him severe punishment from him وَيُبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا حَسَنًا And to give the good tidings, to give good tidings to the believers who do righteous deeds, that they will have a good reward. So this is the promise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reward those who who are uh, going to do righteous things, righteous deeds. It's a glad tiding. So the word qayyiman means straight, or it means the one who has the rule that if someone follows these rules, then he will be, uh, he will be a winner. If someone did not follow the, the rules, then he will be a loser. So the Quran is a warner and a, a, a something, uh, uh, the, the, the signs, the, the ayahs would give glad tidings to those who follow and who do the righteous deeds. مَا كِثِينَ فِيهِ أَبَدًا in which they will remain forever. So it's a warning for those who would say that Allah has taken a son. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying they have no knowledge of it. They don't know anything. Nor had their fathers when they were asked to become Muslims, they would say, no, this is a religion. That is not the religion we were raised up to. And that's not what our forefathers used to know. كَبُرَتْ كَلِمَةً تَخْرُجُ مِنْ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ So nothing will, they will say except إِنْ يَقُولُونَ إِلَّا كَذِبًا Except it's a lie. فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعٌ نَفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ إِنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ أَسَفًا so maybe, maybe, perhaps you will kill yourself through grief over them. If they don't believe in this message. So don't, don't, don't get yourself so grieved. إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَلَكِنَّ إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتُ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ You do not guide those who you love, but Allah guides those whom he wills. إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا مَا عَلَى الْأَرْضِ 
Indeed, we have made that which is on the earth just a dormant. So, so that we may test them of which is best indeed. Who is, who, who would do good deeds? We're going to give them everything. Money, wealth, health, uh, uh, knowledge, everything. But that will be a test. So if you have everything, just remember that nothing is staying forever. Just remember that you are not going to take anything with you. It's only, it's only your deeds that are going. Everything will go after the janaza to the, to the graveyards. Everything will go back. People will go back. The cars will go back. The wealth will go back. The money. No one will ask anybody to just to get their money and to put it in the grave with them. No one. So this life is only a test. And it is... Uh, it is only what uh, some people are imprisoned in this life. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us dunya, to give us life. Bismillah we are not against rahim. something, uh, we are not against wealth. No, it's good to be wealthy. It's good not to be a poor person, but we have to know that whatever, whatever happens, we want this wealth to be only in our pockets. Only in our pockets, not in our heart. And we can have that by, uh, uh, by having uh, Sadaqah, by having zak zakat. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving people this dunya just to test them. Who is sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Every blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us is a test. He gave us good health. Are we using it for the, for uh, helping us just to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have eyes. We want to use our eyes just to, to read Quran, to be good, not to watch anything that is haram or unlawful. We want to do everything. We have hands. We want to have uh, everything. All the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is just a test we have a chance now to get advantage of these things, of these blessings. So we have uh, to know that nothing is uh, staying with us except our righteous deeds. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك سبحانك ربنا لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, Today إن شاء الله we will be uh, going on we uh, uh, last time we saw in ayah 7 how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Indeed, we have made that which is on the earth a dormant for it, that we may test them. So there will be a test. 
everyone in this dunya will be tested. And the highest of those who are tested are, are the prophets. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test us all to see who is the one who can who who will succeed in their in uh, in their tests who who is the one succeeding in the test who are the winners who are the uh, who are those who will get the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will get the reward at the end and who are the ones who will get the punishment Indeed, in the end, we will turn all that is into uh, all that is in this earth into a bare plain. So there will be nothing on it. All that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in this universe is going to vanish. We saw earlier when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِذَا السَّمَاءُ فطرت. So when the heavens break apart. Another verse, إِذَا السَّمَاءُ شَقَّتْ When the sky is split asunder. وَإِذَا الْكَوَاكِبُ انْكَسَرَتْ And when the stars' plants are scattered. إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ When the sun is folded as a ball. وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ كَدَرَتْ And when the light of the stars go away. وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ سُجِّرَتْ And when the seas become a blazing fire. Everything is going to vanish from this earth, from this universe. وَإِنَّا لَجَاعِلُونَ مَا عَلَيْهَا صَعِيدًا جُرُزًا There will be nothing. أَمْ حَسِبْتَ أَنَّ أَصْحَابَ الْكَهْفِ وَالرَّقِّيمِ كَانُوا مِنْ آيَاتِنَا عَجَبًا So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to tell us the story of the people, the companions of the cave, the sleepers of the cave. So we, we mentioned last time that Quraysh wanted to know this story uh, as the uh, Jews uh, sa um, scholars told them to ask Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is saying here, oh, do you think that the companions of the cave or the sleepers of the cave and the inscription or the bearers of the inscription were among our signs a wonder? So as we mentioned last session, we have several stories in Surah Al-Kahf. So this is the first story that talks about the test of religion. We said that everyone is going to be tested. So there will be lots of testing in, in this dunya. So one of the tests might be the uh, test of religion, which is the story of the people of the cave. Another, another test might be the fitna of money, the test of money, the test of having wealth. Another fitna is the fitna, the, the, the test of the knowledge. If, uh, if someone, uh, if that knowledge leads, uh, does not lead to humility. The fitna of power. So there are so many fitnas and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a story about each of these fitnas. And he starts here by the story of Ashabul Kahf. So Allah tells, tells us stories in the, in the Quran. And we all love to hear stories. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the stories of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are ahsan al-qasas, the best of all stories. They are truthful. So in these stories, there are wisdoms and lessons. So do not pass by these stories when you read them without knowing what is the wisdom behind each and every story. Benefit from all the stories. Do not say that these are the stories of old nations. They are just stories. No, there is a wisdom. There is a lesson with each and every story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran. 
So here we have the story of the young men. So some young men were seeking refuge in a cave. We don't know their names. It's irrelevant. We don't know the name of the cave. It's irrelevant. We don't know uh, so many things, so many um, things that each story would tell is not mentioned here. Allah wants, to, wants us to know the story exactly, just the main things in the story. So those young men believed in Allah. They did not want to worship false gods. Same as what their people, what uh, everyone in their uh, uh, village used to do. And there was a king who was a pagan, a non-believer, who wanted to persecute them. So they flee, they run away from him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Oh Muhammad, if Quraysh is asking about the story of the sleepers of the cave, thinking that it is a, a wonder, then tell them. It's not a big wonder. It's one of our miracles that are countless. There are so many miracles that are much greater than this miracle. إِذْ أَوَلْ فِتْيَةُ إِلَى الْكَهْفِ فَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا آتِنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً وَهَيِّئْ لَنَا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا رَشَدًا so when the young men, when the youth ret uh, retreated to the cave and said, our Lord, grant us a special mercy from yourself and prepare for us bright guidance and make our affairs proper. So as soon as they entered the cave, they made a dua. So the word awa, uh, in Arabic means to seek a shelter to hide in. So, and the fitya are the uh, uh, young men at the beginning of uh, of their uh, of age. Yani, it's about uh, late teenager till in uh, the beginning of their twenties. So these are the fitya. So these fitya these young men run away, flee from a problem that they were facing. So they left their people. They left their families. They left their houses. They left their sustenance. They left everything behind and flee, flee and run away. Where? Il al -kahfi, to the cave a place where there is nothing in. So they left everything to nothing. And they said, Rabbana atina min ladunka rahma. So they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for mercy. They asked only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for mercy because they realized that the, they, they knew there is no mercy from people. So they said, oh Lord, give us mercy directly from you. Guide us to the true and straight path, to the path of, uh, of haq, to the, to the path that you choose for us, that is the, the right path. Make our affairs firm and straight. So they were fleeing because they faced a problem. And the first thing they did when they entered the cave was to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rahmatuka ya Rabb. So this is what we say when we have a problem, mercy. Mercy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the, the call even to those who are not, not Muslims. 
Once, uh, this is a story that was told to us. Uh, there was a woman who was not a believer and she was even atheist. She wouldn't believe in God. And she was in a park and uh, when they were in the park, she had her two years old uh, baby with her. And uh, she, she was talking with others and the, the, this child just walked, uh, walked and walked and wandered until he was uh, literally on the street. When his mom just looked and saw him, she said out of, out of a sudden, oh my God. So it was, there was a fast car coming and it was about to hit him. But Allah answered the call of the one who was in, in so much need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She said, oh my God. And Allah immediately answered the call. The car stopped just inches from that child. When a, when a sick person goes to the doctor, he knows that he has uh, uh, something, uh, any, what to say, a very bad illness, a serious uh, sickness, and he goes to the, to the doctor. But even when he goes to the doctor, he makes dua. And with this, he would ask the, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he, Allah, would heal him. He knows that the, the doctor himself is just a means. But if Allah does not uh, order the medicine to heal him, then the medicine will not be effective. And he knows that nothing can help him except Allah, but the doctor is a mean that through that doctor, he would get shifa. But deep in heart, he knows that only Allah is the one who is going to heal him. And that's why he would make dua and sincere dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So dua is the weapon of the believer. It shows complete dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so many people, if they want something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would wake up at night before Fajr because they know that this is the time that Allah is closest to, to his servants. They know that Allah said, Du'uni astajib lakum. Ask me, and I will answer your prayers. And they will make dua, and they would talk to Allah, and they would, they would make sujood, and they will along their sujood, and they will talk to Allah, and they will tell him what they want, and they will cry. Because they know only Allah is able to save them. Only Allah is going to help them. So those young men, when they get into the cave, they, the first thing they did, they made dua. Rabbana atina min ladunka rahmah. O Lord, grant us a special mercy. Lana min amrina rashada. And give us guidance. Make our affairs proper. So what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? فَضَرَبْنَا عَلَىٰ آذَانِهِمْ فِي الْكَهْفِ سِنِينَ عَدَدًا So we cast a cover of sleep over their ears within the cave for a number of years. Now we want to look at the words. A cast, uh, uh, Allah casted a cover of sleep over their ears. What does this mean? So they fell into a deep sleep 
that no matter how loud the sounds are there, they would not walk up. They would not walk up. The word barabna means to hit something with something else in a stronger uh, way. So the one who is hitting should be smart enough that he does not hit with his hand something that is stronger than him because he would be hitting himself. When someone is, when someone is angry, he would hit the uh, table or the wall, but he will feel the pain. Now, barabna, this word means that Allah put a cover. It's not the physical cover. It's not the physical hitting. It's the cover that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put on their ears. Let's take an example now. When a farmer works hard digging in the land, then he feels tired. So what does he do to rest? He stops for a minute. So he stops, even the tools are still in his hands. If he gets tired of standing, then he sits down. But if he gets tired of sitting, he gets a nap. When he falls asleep, he will not feel anything. But if there is a, a he, will, he will not see anything, but if there is a sound, next to him if something hits next to him then he will he will wake up so this is what happened to the sick person who is in pain so when he falls asleep then he stops uttering the pain words and everyone around him would say stop all the noise just whisper don't let him sleep let him rest but as soon as he wakes up he will start feeling the pain once again So it's the sound that will make him wake up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted those young men to fully rest. So he made them sleep, deep sleep. When a person sleeps, he will not be able to see anything around him. His eyes will not, will not work anymore. So he's not seeing anything. But if there is a loud sound near him, he will hear it and he will wake up. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, he, Allah, covered up their ears. He stopped their ears from hearing anything around them. So to have full rest. So they slept for years and years and years. ثُمَّ بَعَثْنَاهُمْ لِنَعْلَمَ أَيُّ الْحِزْبَيْنِ أَحْصَى لِمَا لَبِثُوا أَمَدًا Then we awaken them. That we, we might show which of the two factions, which of the two groups was most precise in calculating what extent they had remained in time. So the word بَعَثْنَاهُمْ is to re resurrect them. And it is said to, so, to, uh, to those who die. So Allah resurrects the death. So as if that their long, long sleep was like death. We know that sleeping is like uh, dying, except that the one who sleeps wakes up again. Uh, wakes up again in this dunya, in this life. While the one who dies will not wake up again until the day of judgment. When we go to sleep, our ruh, our soul, leaves our body. But it is still connected. However, when we die, our ruh leaves our body and the connection is cut off. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains this in Surah Al-Zumar 42, when he says, الله يتوفى الأنفس حين موتها والتي لم تمت في منامها فيمسك التي قضى عليها الموت ويرسل الأخرى إلى أجل مسمى. Allah takes the souls 
at the time of their death and when people are, uh, when people are asleep so he allah subhanahu wa ta'ala withholds the souls for whom he decreed death their soul will not come back and restores and releases the other souls for a specified time it's not death time for them so they will wake again and we hear so many stories that so and so went to bed but never got up again so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought those young men back to see who has the most accurate information about them and of how many years they slept so Allah says, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ نَبَأَهُمْ بِالْحَقِّ إِنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ آمَنُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ وَزِدْنَاهُمْ هُدَى So we are the one who will relate to you, O Muhammad, their true real story. Indeed, they were young men who believed in their, in their Lord and we increased them in guidance. So this is a summary of the whole story. So Allah summarized the story in a few verses, but now he, in, in this um, verse and on, he is going to tell us their, the story, their story in detail. So, وَزِدْنَاهُمْ هُدَى Allah says in Surah Muhammad, Ayah 17, وَالَّذِينَ اهْتَدَوْ زَادَهُمْ هُدًا وَآتَاهُمْ تَقْوَاهُمْ And those who are guided, he increased them in the guidance and gave them their righteousness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would enlighten the inner sight of those who are guided, of those who follow the right path, of those who obey the orders, of those who get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah will give them, give them something extra. So let's take, for example, an example of a teacher. When he, uh, when he notices that he has a very smart uh, student in his class, that he exceeds all his, uh, all his classmates, then he gives him more attention. And he explains more for him. He gives him extra work and consequently extra credit. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he sees someone who is coming to him walking, he comes to him running and he gets him closer to him. So these young men broke away from their culture. They broke away from their society. They broke away from their king and from everyone who was worshipping the idols. They stood up against the culture. They stood up against everything, against everyone. They were open-minded. They wanted to make a change. They wanted to say the truth. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, سَبْعَةٌ يُظِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظِلِّهِ يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّهُ شَابٌ نَشَأَ فِي عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ Seven of the people will be sheltered under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when there is no shade other than his shield. A young man, a young person who is raising himself up in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A young man, a young woman who are uh, doing their best to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Young people who are living righteously. Ya Allah, we ask you to protect our children. Ya Allah, we ask you to protect our kids. We ask you to, to raise them under your care. Ya Allah, we ask you to enlighten their hearts. Ya Allah, we ask you to enlighten their path. Ya Allah, we ask you to enlighten their inner sight. 
We ask you, Ya Allah, to provide them with good companions, good friends who will correct them if they do any mistakes. We want good friends for our kids, Ya Allah. So these are young men together. They were together, they were friends, they were companions. They helped each other for the sake of Allah. They helped each other to be, uh, to stand up against the culture. Sayyidina Musa asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, 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 to send with him his brother so that they both would go to Fir'aun. So Allah said, We will strengthen you with your brother. So being together, having good companions is very important in this, in this dunya. We want to search for the good companions for our children. We want to know who are the friends of our children. Their, the, 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 their friends at school are called classmates. They are not friends. The friends are the ones who will advise them if they get wrong. They will help them to, uh, on the right path. They will show them the right path. They will correct them if they go astray. This is the type of friends that we need for our kids. A good friend, a true friend is very important in this dunya. One of the good people said, and tell me who your friend is and I will tell you who you are. This is what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, So a person would be the same on the same path as his friend. So know how to find your companion. Search for a good companion who will get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be a friend with those who will, if you look at them, they will, get, they will make you say, they will force you to say, Ya Allah, they will remind you of Allah. عاشر من ينهضك إلى الله حاله ويدلك على الله مقاله. Be a friend, take a friend, that person who would, if you see, you will remember Allah and who, if he talks, he will remind you of Allah. Don't just take a friend just to make you happy, to make you feel good, to make you, no. Everything is vanishing in this dunya. But the true friend is the one who will, who will want, who has the aim that he will be in paradise with you. And in the day after, there will be uh, a shafa'a intercession for those who, are, uh, who used to be good friends in dunya. Someone would say, Ya Allah, I haven't seen my friend. Uh, we, were, we were together in dunya. We were making uh, dhikr together. We were, we were in dunya. I, I haven't seen him. He would say he is in hellfire. He says, uh, I cannot leave him there. He say, go to him. Take his hand and go. Take him. And he will be with you in Jannah. True friends for the sake of Allah. Sincere relationship for the sake of Allah, nothing else. So, there are, these are young men who believed in their Lord and they were faithful. They were true believers. So Allah increased their guidance. 
every single step we take to Allah, Allah will make the next step easier. If you decide, if you if you decide to memorize the Quran, it will be, it might be difficult at the beginning. But be patient. Allah will make it easier and easier. If you start, if you start to memorize one line every day, then later you will see, you will find yourself memorizing two or three lines. Why? This is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank him. He made things easier for you. Then you will, you will feel that you will not be able to live without Quran, without the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to memorize it. You want to understand it. You want, you want to know everything about the Quran. You want it to be your, your, uh, your guidance in this dunya. So, man atani yamshi atayituhu harwala. This is what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith of Qusi. Whoever comes walking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah will come to him running. So remember, with every good deed you do, your iman goes up. So the more iman you have, the extra more iman you will get the closer you will get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We have to have a few minutes every day to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just sit alone, talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make wudu, to, to pray two rak'ahs and talk to Allah. Get closer to Allah. Read his book. Know about the life of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Know his seerah. Know about his companions. This is how we get closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So what happens to those, to those young men? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, وَرَبَطْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ إذ قاموا فقالوا ربنا رب السماوات والأرض لن ندعو من دونه إلها آخر لقد قلنا إذا شططا. So we we made Allah سبحانه وتعالى is saying we strengthened and we made firm their hearts. And this is very important. So they, they said, لن ندعو من دونه إلها لقد قلنا إذا تشطط. Well, Allah strengthened their, and made firm their hearts. And when they stood up and said, our Lord is the Lord of the heavens and the earth. We will never invoke any other deity than him. Why should we do so? We would, we would have certainly spoken then an excessive transgression. So Allah showed that their hearts was terrified. They were terrified. They were scared. They were scared of their community's threat that they're going to, to be killed. The king wanted to kill them. So Allah comforted them. وَرَبَطْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَرَبَطْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ And this, this word, رَبَطْنَا, we strengthened their heart. This is what happened to... Uh, the mother of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. When Allah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to her, uh, So, uh, the, uh, if you are scared, then about your son, 
that that you throw him in the in the river so why if that did not happen so when, when she was scared that Fir'aun is going to kill her her son so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired to her that suckle him but when you fear for him cast him into the river and do not fear and do not grieve indeed we will return him to you and we will make him of the messengers so what happens her heart her heart became became empty she she was so so worried about her son she was about to disclose the matters to to, to say it to them and allah made her heart fast firm that she would be of the believers so allah strengthened their hearts so when when they stood up to flee they they initiated the work of fleeing so they started the work and then allah helped him if you want something from allah do not say okay i believe in allah and he will give it to me no you have to do something they fled away and then they asked allah they did not stay still they did not just waited and and ask allah to save them no allah helped them and saved their hearts after they fled away after they made dua so they initiated the work and allah helped after اتخذوا من دونه آلهة لولا يأتون عليهم بسلطان بين فمن أظلم ممن افترى على الله كذبا So these our people have taken besides him deities they worshipped other gods than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why did our people not prove their statements with their true authority. They did not prove what they are saying. They did not prove why they are worshipping other than Allah. Who does more wrong than the one who fabricates lies about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? فَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا so when you speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to be careful of what you are saying. Do not say, I think Allah means this and that. There is no I think. If you are not sure, do not say it. If you are asked a question and you don't know the answer, say, I don't know the answer. Don't be ashamed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has assigned angels to write everything for you. There will be records for you waiting in the day of judgment. And everything, everything will be recorded in their records. So be careful of what you are saying. Do not say a word that is a lie. فَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا وَإِذِ اعْتَزَلْتُمُوهُمْ وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَأْهُوا إِلَى الْكَهْفِ يَنْشُرْ لَكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ مِنْ رَحْمَتِهِ وَيُهَيِّئْ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَمْرِكُمْ مِرْفَقًا So when you broke away from your people, go to the cave. Allah will show you protection. Allah will show you mercy. فَأْوُوا إِلَى الْكَهْفِ يَنْشُرْ لَكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ 
من رحمته ويهيئ لكم من أمرهم من أمركم مرفقا وترى الشمس إذا إذا طلعت تزاور عن كهفهم ذات اليمين وإذا غربت تقرضهم ذات الشمال وهم في فجوة منه ذلك من آيات الله من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا and you would see when the sun rises so it will incline away from the cave on the right and when it sets it will pass away from them to, 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 on the left while they are lying they are lying in in that cave so this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying so the sun is not going to affect them so while they are in that spacious place lying inside the cave so this was one of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if they if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to guide someone then he will be guided but if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to get someone to let to go astray, then you will never find any guardian to direct him. You will, you will never find anyone to, to guide him. So it's all by Allah's will. So Allah guides whoever he wants to guide. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for to, to put us on the right and the right path. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us to give our children the the the, the wisdom to choose what is right and to be away from what is wrong. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين We'll go on إن شاء الله next session السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك uh, بسم الله we, started, we will start today إن شاء الله by continuing uh, سورة الكهف uh, we are uh, on آية 18 and we saw that last time that uh, those uh, young men, this uh, uh, fleet with their religion, they didn't want to uh, be affected by the, uh, the emperor, the king or the people. So they ran away in order to save themselves and to keep their faith in Iman as strong as it was. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, made them, directed them to a cave and he prepared that cave for them. So when the, uh, when the sun would go from uh, the, uh, the well, when it will rise up, it will incline away from their cave uh, on the right. And when it sets, it will uh, again pass away from them to the left. So the, this was preparations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared that cave for them. Allah goes on and says, وَتَحْسَبُهُمْ أَيْقَاظًا وَهُمْ رُقُودٍ وَنُقَلِّبُهُمْ ذَاتَ الْيَمِينِ وَذَاتَ الشِّمَالِ وَكَلْبُهُمْ بَاسِطٌ ذِرَاعَيْهِ بِالْوَصِيدٍ So, Allah is saying, and you would think them wide awake, because their eyes were open, while they were deep asleep. And we turned them to the right and to the left while their dog stretched his four legs at the entrance. 
ولو لو اطلعت عليهم لوليت منهم فرارا ولا ملئت منهم رعبا if you have a look if you have looked at them then you should have turned from them in flight and have been filled up by terror so we said the sun will miss them when it rises up and when it sets down they were sleeping but their eyes were wide open so this is subhanallah something that if the eyes are closed for a long time which in their case would be over 300 years then when the, they will not be able to to see when they open them if they can open them so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is turning these people these uh, young men right and left why imagine there is a sick person who is bedridden who cannot move after two three weeks then he would have skin sores he would have muscle problems so uh, so those people those young men they are turned so they don't have these skin problems they don't have these muscle problems during their 300 and over years of sleeping and what happens to their dog their dog was at the doorstep at the entrance of the cave so no one can get into them only if you had a look on them you will run away out of fear they trusted god and he miraculously saved them he protected them they fell asleep for centuries and they were saved from that tyrant emperor from that tyrant king وَكَذَلِكَ بَعَثْنَاهُمْ لِيَتَسَاءَلُوا بَيْنَهُمْ قَالَ قَائِلٌ مِّنْهُمْ كَمْ لَبِثْتُمْ قَالُوا لَبِثْنَا يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْضَ يَوْمٍ قَالُوا رَبُّكُمْ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا لَبِثْتُمْ فَبْعَثُوا أَحَدَكُمْ بِوَرِقِكُمْ هَذِهِ إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَيُّهَا أَزْكَى طَعَامًا فَلْيَأْتِكُمْ بِرِزْقٍ مِّنْهُ وَلْيَتَلَطَّفْ وَلَا يُشْعِرَنَّ بِكُمْ أَحَدًا So and similarly uh, we awakened them that they might question one another they would look at themselves and they will answer uh, what's going on what is going on how 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 many years so said as people of them among them how long have you have we remained here and they looked at themselves and they said we have remained a day or a part of a day and they said okay your lord is most knowing of how long you remained so send one of you with this silver coin of yours to the city and let him look to which is the best food the pure food and bring you provision from that food and let him be cautious and let no one be aware of you now let's start with the deep uh, understanding of the ayah the word ba'athnahum wa kadhalika ba'athnahum the word ba'ath ba'athnahum means or refers to resurrection after death and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used this word here to indicate the long period they slept okay so when they uh, when they asked each, uh, each other how many years how, how long did you sleep they said yawman aw ba'da yawm a day or part of a day why did they say so because they looked at themselves they did not find anything different they were young and they stayed young their hair was not gray and it stayed uh, the same way so they said it's not important how long we slept because they nothing changed for them 
So look at this uh, at this thing. Uh, it's not important to argue about the uh, uh, things that are not important. Stop, stop arguing. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ana za'imun bi baytin fi rabadi al-jannati liman taraka al-mira'a wa in kana muhiqqan. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is guaranteeing a house in paradise, in a special part of paradise for that person who does not argue even if he, he is right. And we all know that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the way he used to talk, his words would be counted. He used to use jawami'ul kalim, a few words that would give a lot of meanings. So the point is, stop arguing. Do not argue. So here, they said it's not important how long we slept. Let's not talk about this. Allah knows exactly how long we slept. But what was important as I mentioned for them now is that they are hungry. They want to eat. So when they suggested that someone goes to buy, to use the silver coins that they have to buy some food, he said, فَبَعَثُوا أَحَدَكُمْ بِوَرِقِكُمْ هَذِهِ إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَيُّهَا أَزْكَى طَعَامًا The word أَزْكَى means good, delicious, but at the same time pure. Pure. And this is a real sign of taqwa. When we, when we want to practice taqwa, we, we have to have it in all we have to have it in all um, our actions, in everything. We have to have it in everything, in actions, in food, in our money. Our money should be, should be pure. Our actions should be pure and for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. Uh, everything, everything should be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Get some pure food, some good food, but make sure that nobody sees you. Make sure nobody sees you. They are not sure that the, uh, the uh, uh, things have changed because the people are looking for them. So they slept only they slept only for a few, a few seconds, a few minutes, part of a day. So they, they slept only for a short period of time. That's what they think. So they are sure that people are looking for them and they have to be careful. They, they have not to, they don't have to draw attention to themselves. So just be, just be aware, be cautious. If we look at this, we, we understand something very important, that we have to, when we have tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we really depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what is going on? Then we have to take necessary precautions and depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we cannot just say, okay, I am depending on Allah, and he, he will save me. You cannot say that. You have to take precaution. You have to start being aware. So you cannot say I'm depending on him. Allah, 
uh, and he will save me. No, you have to take measures. So why did they? Were, uh, why were they so uh, cautious? Because they said, "Innahum yazharu alaykum yarjumukum, aw yuidukum fi milletikum, walan tuflihu idan abda." Indeed, if they come to know of you, you will, you will, uh, they will stone you. Or they will force you to return to their religion. And what will happen after that? And never would you succeed than ever. So they faced death because they refused to worship the false gods. They refused to worship anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were true believers and they wanted to save their, their hearts because they are seeking for the day after. They are seeking for their reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. So this is what was their concern. They did not care about dunya. They did not care about anything. No distractions, just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they faced death because they refused to worship these false gods. So they ran away. And when they woke up again, they said, we have to be careful not to get caught by that tyrant king, that tyrant emperor and his men. So the lesson here is, do not throw yourself into harm. Stay away from it. Keep safe. Your soul is an amana. Save it. It's not only your body to take care of. You have to take care of your soul also. And how do we take care of our souls? Just know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you this amana, so you have to take care of it. You have to keep getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to nourish your soul. Send salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Read Quran, be with righteous people, learn about your religion, learn about uh, the, uh, the life of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, learn about the companions, how they lived, how they acted, how, how they stood firm with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are at an age now that we have to be very strong with our faith to face all those arrows that are being hit directly against us, against Muslims. So take care of your amana. Because when you cannot take care of others, if you yourself is not strong enough, you have your family as an amana. But you have to be strong to take care of your amana. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help always. And just be sure that you cannot fulfill anything without, uh, without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot do anything without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So get yourself prepared. Get yourself ready to, to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to do in this life. To fulfill the uh, purpose of your life. Alif la mim am hasib al nasu an yutraku an yakulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun. There will be fitan, there will be tests all your life. But you have to be strong. strong. Allah will test his servants, his people, just to know who is going to be a winner, who is going to be a loser. 
So be careful, get yourself prepared, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. But what you have, you have to be, you have to be careful. You have to start the uh, first step. And then you depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah will help you. So, what happened now? Those young men were saved. And Allah wants the truth to be revealed now. So he says, وَكَذَلِكَ أَعْثَرْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ وَعْضَ اللَّهِ حَقٍّ And similarly, we, ha- we caused them to be found so that they who found them would know that the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is truth. So that everyone up till our, our day, up uh, till the day of, of, of judgment, everyone will know that the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is truth. وَأَنَّ السَّاعَةَ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهَا إِذْ يَتَنَازَعُونَ بَيْنَهُمْ أَمْرَهُمْ فَقَالُوا بْنُوا عَلَيْهِمْ بُنْيَانًا رَبُّهُمْ أَعْلَمُ بِهِمْ قَالَ الَّذِينَ غَلَبُوا عَلَىٰ أَمْرِهِمْ لَنَتَّخِذَنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ مَسْجِدًا So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused them to be found so that everyone would know that the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is truth and that the hour is, uh, uh, there is no doubt about the day of judgment, about the hour. When they asked Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the hour, he says, وَمَا الْمَسْؤُولُ عَنْهَا بِأَعْلَمَ مِنَ السَّائِلِ the one who is being asked does not have more information about the one who is asking. No one knows when is the hour except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that was when they disputed about amongst themselves how uh, about their affairs and then they said, construct over them a structure. Their Lord is most knowing about them, said those who prevail in the matter. We will surely take for ourselves over them a masjid. So this is how uh, they were discovered. That was because of the coin. No one accepted to take the coin in return of the food that that young man went to buy for his friends. So the salesman uh, sent him from one to another and everyone said, oh, what is this money? We don't know this money. So they couldn't recognize, the, uh, they, they couldn't recognize this money, people. Also, something strange happened. The young man himself could not recognize anything around him. Centuries have gone by. Everything is different. People are different. Shops are different. Merchandise is different. Uh, The structures are different. So the sellers refused to take the coin. And they sent him from one to another until they thought that he has found a treasure. And he was forced to go before the bishop. The, the bishop. We know earlier we said that the uh, three hundred years ago, when uh, they uh, uh, ran away, people were pagans, but later they became Christians. So the bishop asked asked him, "What is this? What is his story?" But before before the man answered, he said. Where is that emperor? And it is said, Wallahu alam, that the name of that emperor was Decius. And this person died um, about 250 CE. So we no nobody, nobody knows uh, that. Uh, this person 
except someone who, who lived with him. So they told him, they said, he has died centuries back. And he told them the stories. The bishop could not believe the story. So he said, take me, take me to, to the cave you are talking about. So the young man took them, took the bishop and a few people to the cave. And they saw his friends. They saw their cloth and they realized, they found out that they are really of that era. The bishop and the men left. And after that, all the young men died naturally after they were discovered by people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused them to be found so that everyone is sure that Allah's promise is true and that there is no doubt about resurrection. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give victory to those who truly believe in him, to those who sacrifice for his sake, to those who do not get distracted by dunya, by nafs, by shaitan, by anything. They are real, true believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they wanted to, to keep their heart pure and nothing in their heart except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They run away. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Muhammad in Ayah 7, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, in tansuru allaha yansurkum wa yuthibbit aqdamakum. Oh, you who believe, who, who believe, if you support Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will support you. Allah will give you victory. And how do you support Allah? By being obedient servants, by following the orders, by accepting anything that Allah has ordered you to do and being away from anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to be away from. So this story is a sign that the promise of Allah is, is truth. So let them know that there is no doubt about Allah's victory. There will be a day that Allah will give you victory. Just stay firm. So they began debating about what should be done with them. So several ideas were given. Some of them said, فَقَالُوا بْنُوا عَلَيْهِمْ بُنْيَانًا So one group said, let's build a monument to honor them. Allah knows all that happened. We don't know, but we need to honor them. Others gave other opinion until, until a group said, قَالَ الَّذِينَ غَلَبُوا عَلَىٰ أَمْرِهِمْ لَنَتَّخِذَنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ مَسْجِدًا Those who won the debate said, we will build a place of worship here. Actually, this is a true story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept their remembrance till today and until the day of judgment, it will stay there. Their remembrance will be, their story will be told from generation to generation to generation. سَيَقُولُونَ ثَلَاثَةٌ رَابِعُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ وَيَقُولُونَ خَمْسَةٌ سَادِسُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ رَجْمًا بِالْغَيْبِ وَيَقُولُونَ سَبْعَةٌ وَثَامِنُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ قُلْ رَبِّي أَعْلَمُ بِعِدَّتِهِمْ مَا يَعْلَمُهُمْ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ فَلَا تُمَارِ فِيهِمْ إِلَّا مِرَاءً ظَاهِرًا وَلَا تَسْتَفْتِ فِيهِمْ مِنْهُمْ أَحَدًا so say, some, some said they were three and the fourth of them being their dog. They will say they were five and the sixth of them is their dog. 
it's only an estimation. Some say they were seven and the eighth of, the, of them was their dog. So say, O oh Muhammad, my Lord is the most knowing of their number. So it's not important. Allah knows the number. None knows the exact, none knows exactly how many were they except for a few. So do not argue with them except that you have a solid knowledge. There is a lesson here, and we mentioned that last time. Speak with knowledge or keep silent. If you are asked a question and you don't know the answer, just say, I'm, I don't know the answer. I will check the answer. I will ask someone who knows the answer. If you are not qualified to speak, then keep silent. Do not argue about something that you are not sure about. So do not discuss something if you are not sure about, but do not argue about something that knowing it would not benefit and not knowing it would not harm. The most important thing is the story. Young men ran away, uh, believed in Allah and they ran away, so Allah saved them. This is the, mo the most important thing. It's not important the names of those people. It's not important how many are exactly, how, how, how many were they? It's not important. It's not important the place. It's a cave, any cave, a cave. But what is important is the truth. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had specified time or so people uh, had specified time, so people would say, oh, this is only for that time. This story is only for that time. It's only a story. If he specified the names, then people would say, oh, this, is, this story is about so-and-so. If he specified the number, then they will say, this is the number. That's, that's only about the, those people. But Allah kept these things unknown for a reason that this story might happen to everyone. It might happen to everyone. Anyone can be in their position. So the lesson is be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will be with you. Kun ma'allah yakuni Allahu ma'ak. Be with Allah. Be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of ease. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with you at the time of hardship. Uh, and do not ask them. Do not ask them as they do not have the, the knowledge. Do not ask your people who came and they, they, are, they are judging you. They are asking you about, how, about the story of these people because they don't know. They do not know, they do not have the knowledge. And we mentioned uh, uh, also that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ This is Surah Al-Nahl, ayah, ayah 43. And also the same ayah is repeated in Surah Al-Anbiya, ayah 7. Ask the people of knowledge if you do not know. But Ya Muhammad, do not ask these people, they don't know. So you, when you want to have knowledge, when you want to ask someone, don't ask anyone 
except that you are sure that this person has the knowledge or he can get you the, the exact knowledge, the exact answer, the correct answer. You have to know who to ask. And it is said that at the end of time, so many people would give fatwas. So many people would give fatwas, which is very wrong. Even if they don't know, they will give fatwa. Someone would ask them, they will immediately answer without thinking about the question. And this is the end of time. So, do not ask except the people of knowledge. They don't know, don't ask them. And never say, I will do anything tomorrow. I will do this thing tomorrow. Never say that, except you add, inshallah, if Allah wills. So inshallah, When you want to do something, say inshallah. And when you say so, then you are as if you are saying, Ya Allah. Min hawli wa quwwati wa bi hawlika wa quwwatik. I am, I have no power. You have the power. If you will that, if you will that thing will happen, then it will happen. If you will that thing that not to happen, then it will not happen. I don't know. I am depending on you, Ya Allah. This is one of the ways that we depend on Allah. Just keep mentioning, keep saying, Insha Allah, I want to come visit you. Insha'Allah, you never know. You never know if you can, uh, if you will wake up or not. You never know if you if your car will uh, act funny on that day or not. You will never know if you can make it on the road or not. You you never know if this will happen or not. Just say Insha'Allah. Always have the company of Allah with it, with you. Insha'Allah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, thank Allah for everything good that happens to you, alhamdulillah. وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيتَ وَقُلْ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَهْدِيَنِي رَبِّي لِأَقْرَبَ مِنْ هَذَا رَشَدَ And remember your Lord when you forget. Suppose that you said, okay, I'm going to do this tomorrow. Or today, after an hour, and you forgot to say, inshallah, just say it whenever you remember it. Inshallah. So remember, remember your Lord when you forget. Say, perhaps, my Lord will guide me. وَقُلْ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَهْدِيَنِي رَبِّي لِأَقْرَبَ مِنْ هَذَا رَشَدًا so say, perhaps my Lord, my Lord will guide me to what is nearer than this, to the right conduct. So guide me, Ya Allah, to something better to what I had in mind. We don't know, we ask Allah. And that's why whenever we want to do something, we would do Salatul Istikhara. We want to, whenever we want to have a decision, then we will do Salatul Istikhara. So ask Allah. Ask Allah. Now, always say, Allahumma inni la uhsinu al-ikhtiyara fakhtar li, wa la uhsinu al-tadbira fadabbir li. Ya Allah, I don't know how to choose. You choose for me. I don't know how to manage my affairs. You manage them for me. Because I trust that whatever you want for me is the best. I don't know what's best for me. 
Sometimes we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something to happen. We ask him for something to happen. But when it happens, we say, oh, we wish it did not. That's why from now on, stop. Say, say what you want, but add at the end. Ask Allah for whatever you want, but add at the end. If there is khair in that thing, ya Allah, and you know, you know best, I don't know. Allahumma inni la uhsinu al-ikhtiyara fakhtar li, wa la uhsinu al-tadbira fadabbir li. So remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes we want to save something, we don't want it to, to get lost. We, uh, so we hide it. We want to hide this thing. It's so precious. We don't want to lose it. And what happens? We forget where we hide it. So you keep searching and searching and searching and searching. You don't find it. And there is a way to help you find things. Uh, if you lose them, read Surah Wadduha. Subhanallah, it's, it, it helps, but in order not to forget where you put your things, which is something that, we, that happens to all of us, be aware when you want it, the, the second you want to put it, to leave it from your hand to put, to put it, then say, Bismillah. When you say Bismillah, then you are aware, your mind is aware of the place that you put it in. So just say Bismillah before putting your stuff here and there, before hiding your, your stuff or before losing your stuff that you hide. Okay. Subhanallah. So, وَلَبِثُوا فِي كَهْفِهِمْ ثَلَاثَ مِئَةٍ سِنِينَ وَازْدَادُوا تِسْعَةٍ so now they remained in their cave for 300 years and it, it also nine. So 309 years. <clears throat> they stayed sleeping in that uh, cave. قُلِ اللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا لَبِثُوا لَهُ غَيْبُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَبْصِرْ بِهِ وَأَسْمِعْ Say, Allah is most knowing of how long they remained. No one knows, but Allah. He has the knowledge of the unseen. The knowledge of the unseen of the heavens, the knowledge of the unseen of the earth. He has the knowledge of the unseen of everything. How sleeping is he and how hearing, how seeing, sorry, how seeing is he? Allah never sleeps, but he always sees everything. He always hears everything. So he, this is something that we have always to keep with us. Allah is overwatching us. Allah knows everything. And at the day, at the day of judgment, he is going to uh, present everything for us in the record. You have no one to depend on except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have no one to, to take care of you except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what's good, what is unique, what is amazing, what is miraculous is that Allah gives the orders, Allah gives the rulings, and no one, no one shares anything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He by himself does everything. 
وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين والميت إن شاء الله next week السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, Today إن شاء الله We will be starting with Ayah 27 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَاتْلُ مَا أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ كِتَابِ رَبِّكَ لَا مُبَدِّلَ لِكَلِمَاتِهِ وَلَنْ تَجِدَ مِنْ دُونِهِ مُلْتَحَدًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying and recite, O oh Muhammad, what has been revealed to you of the book of your Lord. There is no changer of, the, of his word and never will you find in other than him a refuge. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to recite the Quran. And this is an order for us to recite the Quran. So when you are uh, uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are reading his book, you feel, you feel something something special connection you feel a special connection between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you read his words so what is this book this book this Quran is the source of life it governs everything justly and it's full of wisdom and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put his ayahs, put his uh, Quran in several ways for us so that uh, we have, for example, when we read the story of Musa alayhi salam, this, this story comes over and over and over in the Quran. But every time you read it, you feel that you are reading a new story. Every time you read, you read this story, you feel that there is something new. You never get bored of reading the same story over and over and over. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this book, he gave us the law, he gave us the program, he gave us the system that we have to follow in our lives so we can live happily, so we can reach the, the, uh, the end happily and safely. Just follow the orders, just follow what's in this holy book and try always to get a good bond with the Quran. Try always to get a good connection with the Quran. And you can do that by reciting it every day. Just have, have a few minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes every day just to read Quran. If you can read one ayah, read two ayahs. If you can read one page, do it two pages. Get a stronger connection to the holy book of Allah and try to understand its meanings. And this will help you focusing in your prayers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, When you are in a different, in a difficult situation, just recite to the book of Allah. Quran will be your protection. 
The Quran will shelter you like the cave sheltered those young men who run away with their religion. So this is what Prophet Muhammad وسلم, did whenever he had a problem. Whenever he was seeking the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would spend some time with the Quran. So nothing, no one will change the words of the Quran. No one will be able to change the words of the Quran. No one will be able to add a, a letter, not a word, a letter to the word of the, uh, to the uh, uh, book of Allah. No one can delete a word from the book of Allah. Allah revealed it. He, he is going to preserve it and to keep it as is until the day of judgment. No changes. So no one will change the words of Allah. Allah uh, uh, has promised that. The Quran will be the same from the time it was revealed until the day of judgment. You will never find other than him. If you need shelter, you just seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will never find other than him, other than Allah for refuge. If you need something, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the most generous. He's the one who listens to you without any comments, without any uh, uh, looks, without, without anything. He's listening to you. If you have something that, that you need help, wake a little bit, wake up a little bit before Fajr prayer and everyone is asleep. You are alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then at that time, just sit, talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make your wudu, pray to rak'as and talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَنْ تَجِدَ مِنْ دُونِهِ مُلْتَحَدًا وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَهُ وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ تُرِيدُ زِينَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا تُطِعْ مَنْ أَغْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرُوطًا and keep yourself patient by being with those who call upon their Lord in the morning and the evening, seeking his countlessness, seeking his pleasure. And let not your eyes pass beyond them, desiring the adornment of the worldly life. And do not obey those whose heart we have made blind, heedless of our remembrance and who follows his desire and whose affair is ever negligent. When Quraysh wanted to Ibn Muhammad وسلم, to stop his call to Islam, they tried their best with several methods, several ways. If you want money, we will give you money. If you want women, we will get you married to the best and to the most beautiful woman. If you want this, we will give it to you. If you want that, we will give it to you. And Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said, I was not sent to you for any of these things. I was sent to you with haqq, with the truth. And this is what's going on. Nothing will change what I was sent to you. For, uh, uh, everything, everything is nothing in compared with what, uh, what I was sent to you. So when they knew that they cannot convince him, they said, okay, let's go to his uncle. He might be closer to him. He might convince him. But we all know what he said to his uncle. Wallahi la wada'u al-shamsa fi yameeni wal-qamara fi yasari ala an atruka hadha al-amra ma taraktuh. By Allah, if they put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand, I will never leave what I have been sent with. 
So at the end, they accepted that to tell him that, okay, those people who are so poor, we cannot sit with them. So if you get rid of these people, then we will, we will accept. This is the order that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. So those poor people are called Ahlu Sufa. Who are Ahlu Sufa? They are the poor people of Muhajireen, of the immigrants who came to Medina. They had no shelter. They, they left everything they left they left their food their uh, clothes their uh, wealth their money their lands they left everything just for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they stayed in the um, uh, mosque in masjid rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the only thing they would do is seeking knowledge worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reading quran uh, uh, working on hadith and they 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 were the blessed people in our days there are in the uh, the masjid of sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in al-haram al-madani there are there is a group of people who are called al-mujawirun so those people, they stay in a road of Sharifa, they read the Quran, they make salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, all day long. They don't have job, they don't have anything. They are at the masjid of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, as long as they are allowed to stay in. And they are called Al-Mujawirun. So since the time of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this group of people is there in the masjid. So when we see these people nowadays, we should be good to them. We should, we should know that those are the true worshippers of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. We should not look at the, uh, knock them down because of their poverty of, no. Those are blessed people. Their, their dua is accepted. And normally rich people go to them for dua when they have any hardship in their lives. So be patient, ya Muhammad, be patient with those poor low class people who make dua all the time, in the morning and in the evening. So Umayyah, Umayyah bin Khalaf and, other, and others of the elite of Quraysh came to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said to him, if you get rid of Bilal, Abu Dhar, Ibn Mas'ud, who were all of the people of Ahlu Sufa, whom, we, uh, whom were looked down uh, by those elite people of Quraysh, so, they, so then if you, if you kick the, these people out, then we will join you. And they found themselves above those poor people. They couldn't accept that they are equal to them. To, to them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse and other verses to assure to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that if people make fun of you, but you need to be patient with these, with these poor people. Even if people, if those rich people uh, did not want them, so you don't listen to them. Those are the people who always make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who, who constantly pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So not only that, you Muhammad, but وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ Don't even move your gaze beyond those pe poor people. Look at their iman and taqwa. Look at the iman and taqwa they have in their heart. And not to the wealth and faith of the people of Quraysh. وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ مَدَدْ this is the, the, the gaze of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Rasulullah, we want a gaze from you. 
the gaze is uh, is uh, something that would help the believer. So this gaze from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is going to ease the the hard life that those be poor people are living. And this is a lesson to us. Treat to those poor, treat to the poor people uh, well, so that you will make them feel good. You will make them forget what they are living in. So if you don't practice patience by being with this group, then Ya Muhammad, to read Zinat al Hayat al Dunya, you will you will be someone who would desire, who would want the atonement of this worldly life. But do you think Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to, would listen to those people uh, of Quraysh? Of course not. He will never think of getting rid of Sayyidina Bilal or Sayyidina Abu Huraira or, or those, those true believers. So he will never get rid of, the, of them, neither of others who say, uh, who for the sake uh, of those rich people, he will not get rid of those poor people. But the wisdom here is that we have to be careful. As I just mentioned, we have to treat them, the, the, the poor people well. And though, and everywhere, and all the time, we find poor people. So we have to treat them with love, care, respect. We are, and we are really the ones who are addressed here in this ayah. In fact, some sick people, actually, what happened, they noticed how those poor people are taken care, well taken care of. So uh, people would give them charity, people would give them food, cloth, and other things. And they noticed that these poor people have left everything of this dunya for the sake of Allah, but even though they are getting a lot from people. So they said, okay, why we do not pretend that we are poor and get similar help. For these sick people, we say, be careful. Allah is overwatching. Allah knows intentions and Allah knows realities. And it happens that sometimes you give charity, then you get some doubts. Uh, are these people really in need? So if you are, if you have the doubt and you cannot uh, be sure, just remember that Allah knows the intentions. Don't say I'm not giving because I'm not sure. No, give. Allah will reward you for your sincere intentions to help and, and for your uh, for you obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he orders you to give and you are giving but at the same time he also knows whether they deserve it or not and whether he bestows his blessings on what they get or not so just be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't think of anything else so ولا تعد عيناك عنهم تريد زينة الحياة الدنيا ولا تطع من أغفلنا قلبه عن ذكرنا. Do not follow that group whose heart we have made blind of our remembrance. The poor group is making dua all the time, morning and evening. And we, we see that Allah sends people to take care of those poor people. So their sustenance will be given to them, even they are sitting doing nothing in this dunya. And this is what uh, the explanation of 
يا دنيا من خدمني فاخدميه ومن خدمك فاستخدميه يا دنيا life this worldly life whoever serve me so uh, this is uh, Allah is saying it whoever serves me then serve him give him but whoever serves you whoever is clinched to you whoever wants dunya and wants the pleasure of dunya seeking nothing except dunya then you use that person you make him not happy you make him just want to run and get more run and get more so The other group do not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they follow their desires. So their, their goal is not to accept what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want and to fulfill what the, he wants to obey him, but they 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 are lost those people are lost they are losers they are lost they don't know what they want they are following desires only they are following hawa they are following their nafs they are following their ego but they are not doing what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want them to do وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ So now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has said these ayahs, has mentioned these ayahs, say ya Muhammad, the truth is from your Lord. So he is talking to those people. Your Lord. And, rem and just the 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 word your uh attracts our attention and reminds us that those uh non-believers when they were asked who created the skies they said allah who created the earth they said allah who created this they said allah so they believe in allah but they don't want to believe in the message this is the truth from your Lord whom you accepted. So whoever wills, let him believe. And whoever wills, let him disbelieve. This is the truth from your Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in one of the hadith Qudsi, Ya ibadi law anna awwalakum wa akhirakum wa insakum wa jinnakum kanu ala qalbi atqa rajulin wahidin minkum ma zada thalika fi mulki shay'a. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to all his uh, servants, to all the, the, the people he created. And he said, if all of you, the first until the last, and all the ints, all the jinn, everyone are helping the best person that will not increase my kingdom. And if all of you were supporting that uh, bad person, the, 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 the one who does not do anything good, that will also not decrease anything of my kingdom. If everybody, every one of you were in line and each one of you Asked me something. فسألوني فأعطيت فسألني فأعطيت كل واحد مسألته ما نقص ذلك مما عندي إلا كما ينقص المخيط إذا أدخل البحر. So if each and every one of you asked me for something, and I gave everyone their request, whatever they asked for, 
That's, that will not decrease my kingdom. The only thing that might be, if you get a needle and you immerse it in the ocean and you take it out, the, uh, the, this just little bit of water that sticks to it, this is how it is for me to give everybody. But my kingdom is my kingdom. Nothing will affect my kingdom. Ya ibadi, innama hiya a'malukum uhsiha lakum. It's only your deeds that I am I am counting for you now, that I'm recording for you now. Thumma uwafikum iyaha. And then I will show it to you. You will get your records. فَمَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمَدِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ وَجَدَ غَيْرُ ذَلِكْ فَلَا يَلُومَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسَهِ Whoever finds good, whoever uh, finds that he is a winner, then thank he has to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whoever finds other than that, he should only blame himself. إِنَّهُ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ It's your deeds, and then there will be either a reward or a threat or a punishment. So you wanted a proof and I gave it to you. You you came asking uh, mm, uh, Prophet Muhammad about the uh, the story of the people of the cave and I gave it to you and I told you the, the story. He told you the story. So you wanted the answers to your questions and Muhammad answered your questions. Now, what you do? What do you want to do now? The truth is from your Lord, and you can either believe or or just keep denying. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala threatens now the losers and promises those who obey and win. So it will be either an evil place to live in or it will be a marvelous place to enjoy. فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ Then, who, whoever, whosoever wills, let him believe, and whosoever wills, let him disbelieve. So, what will happen? Why is that? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah, لَا إِكْرَاهَ فِي الدِّينِ There should be no compulsion in acceptance of the religion. Everyone has their intellect, so they are free to do whatever they want. They can live for this dunya, they can live happily here and be rich there, or they can be happy here, uh, happy there, and e even though they are enjoying this dunya, because they know, they follow the book, they follow the Quran, they follow the orders of the Quran, they follow the catalog that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for a happy life and a happy life after. <laughs> so verily, we have prepared for the wrongdoers a fire. But what type of fire is it? Whose walls shall be surrounding them? So the fire will be surrounding those who transgressed, those who did wrong deeds, those who, who were not obeyers, those who denied, those who belied. وَإِن يَسْتَغِيثُوا يُغَاثُوا بِمَا إِن كَالْمُهْلِ يَشْوِي الْوُجُوهِ and if they ask for a drink in hellfire while they are there, they will be granted their wish, but they will be given boiling water. It was boiling to the degree that it will scald their faces. Normally when you say, if someone 
if someone is asking for something and you are giving it to him, then it means you are doing something good to that person. But those people of hellfire, when they ask for a drink, they are given, but they are giving a torment with that. يَشْوِ الْوُجُوهُ it will cut their intestines. It will destroy them. Terrible is this drink. And terrible and evil is the place to live in. So imagine the type of torture they will be living in. And the thing is that this life that they will be living is perpetual, forever. This punishment is not going to end. It will not even going to decrease. On the contrary, it will increase. Whenever they are burned, whenever their, their skin is burned, whenever their uh, organs are burned, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create a new skin and they will be burnt again and again and again and again. This will happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want our heart to feel that heavy. And after mentioning the state of these doomed ones, he, mentioned, he mentions the blessed believers and he mentions what he has prepared for those who obeyed him in dunya, for those who followed his orders, for those who followed Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for those who connected with Allah, for those who connected with the Quran, for those who connected with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ إِنَّا لَا نُضِيعُ أَجْرَ مَنْ أَحْسَنَ عَمَلًا So indeed, as for those who believed and did righteous deeds. So let's stop for a second. آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ They, these two things, belief and doing good deeds, Righteous deeds, they go together. Iman without doing good deeds is not enough. Doing good deeds without being a Muslim is not enough. Iman and faith together. Faith and righteous deeds together. So indeed, as for those who believed and did righteous deeds, certainly, we shall not make the reward of anyone to be lost. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just. He's the most just. And he says in Surah uh, Az Zalzala, he says, Whoever does a speck weight of good will get its reward. And on the contrary, of course, whoever does any speck of bad, he will get his punishment. And we have always to remember do not la tanzur ila sighar al ma'siyah walakin unzur ila man asayt do not look at how small the sin you are going to make is but look at one important thing look at who you have disobeyed even if the if the uh, mistake is so so small that's not the issue the issue is disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, amanu wa amilu salihat. And we know that there are so many hadith that 
Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, talks about the best of manners, the best of characters. And he says, the closest of you to me in the day of judgment, those who are the best, uh, who have the, who, who do the best good deeds, who are, who have the best manners. And once he was talking to Sayyidina Abu Huraira, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, عَلَيْكَ بِحُسْنِ الْخُلْقِ يَا أَبَا هُرَيْرَ Sayyidina Abu Huraira, of course, understands what he, what Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, but he asked him, and this, uh, this question he asked, he asked just for us to learn. So he said, وَمَا حُسْنُ الْخُلُقِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ What is حُسْنُ الْخُلُقِ? What is the good manners, yeah, O oh, oh Prophet? So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, أَن تُعْطِي مَنْ حَرَمَكْ وَتَصِلُ مَنْ قَطَعَكْ وَتَعْفُ عَمَّنْ ظَلَمَكْ Or as what, uh, the order he says, so you connect to those who cut you off. And you give those who deprive you. And you forgive those who, mis uh, who do bad things to you. Do you think this is easy, guys? Do you think that this is not called husnul khuluq, the best of manners? Can you imagine someone who gives, who, who uh, uh, does something very wrong to you and you say, okay, I forgive you. This needs a very pure heart. When someone does something bad to you, you say, I forgive you, and you make dua for that person, this is a sound heart. It's not easy. It's not easy to give those who deprive you. And giving is not only to give money. No, feelings. They were bad to you, but you are good to them. This is feeling. They, they needed some help when nobody could help except you, but they were doing so many bad things to you. Are you going to turn around and say, okay, I don't know you? Or are you going to, to give your, your hand to them to take them out of the situation they are living in? So this is husnul khuluq. So whoever does anything good, he will be rewarded. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, ittaqu nara walaw bi shiqqi tamra. Fear, fear, fire. They, uh, do something good to, to get yourself away from it, even by giving half of a date. Not a date, half of a date. Ittaqu Allah. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what will happen to those people? To the people who are um, good believers and who do righteous things. Now open your heart and get into these words. Imagine yourself in, in enjoying these rewards. And inshallah, we will all be enjoying these things. Those will have gardens of perpetual residence. So this will be their reward. For them will be Jannatu Adn. So this is a special time, a special place in Jannah called Jannatu Adn. What are the what are the things in there? So beneath them, beneath them, rivers will flow. So when, when people here in dunya, they will see a nice river, they would go uh, have a picnic there, they will uh, enjoy their time there. It's so, it's so beautiful. So they will be adorned therein, in these jannas, with bracelets of gold. 
ويلبسون ثيابا خضرا من سندس واستبرق and they will they will wear green garments garments of fine silk and brocade so imagine the type of uh, material the fabric that that the cloth will be and a be beautiful nice green colors so this is what they will be wearing they will be wearing thick and shiny velvet green garments so sundus and istabraq muttakiina fiha ala al-araik so they will be reclining therein on adorned cushions so they will be lying down they will be resting they will be enjoying their time ni'ma al-thawab wa hasunat murtafaqa so how good is the reward and what an excellent place to be in what an excellent is how excellent is this reward and how good is this resting place so imagine imagine the blessings that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for his for his uh, people and we all know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared in this uh, in this the uh, akhirah uh, something ma la ayn ra'at wala udhun sami'at wala khatar ala qalbi bashar so this is something that the people would never be able to imagine this is the type of reward that allah has subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for this uh, uh, for these winners so this is how we our heart now is seeking this is what our heart is seeking now this highly um, amazing place of uh, perpetuality nothing is going to be decreased on the contrary everything will be increased so now if you have a, just a moment to compare the reward and the punishment so allah has shown what will happen in the day after allah has uh, given us the true image of what will be there فمن شاء فليؤمن ومن شاء فليكفر whoever can decide for himself do you, the, does uh, does he want to be a believer or a non believer so to go back to the first ayah we say allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us to get connected to the quran and we know that when we are reading the quran we feel that we are in a different world this is the divine world so the only thing we say we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to read the quran we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to to be able to understand the quran we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is giving us the permission to get connected to the quran so we say ya rabbi lak alhamd kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhik wa azim sultanik thanks is for you allah thanks is suitable to the grace of your face and the greatness of your supreme authority ya allah we don't know how to thank you we don't know how to praise you we cannot praise you the way you deserve to be praised you have chosen us amongst all your creations to be able to connect to you and to connect to the quran to connect to sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we can thank you enough ya allah so we stop here inshallah 
And next time, inshallah, we will be having another story, other lessons, and uh, other explanations, inshallah. وصلى اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم last time we saw how uh, the uh, um, wealthy people of Quraysh came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanting uh, him to uh, uh, get rid of the poor Muslims because they don't feel it's uh, uh, good for them to be equal to this low class uh, in their eyes. So what, uh, and we know how Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of course will never get rid of the uh, of those blessed people so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is now giving us an example and this is the example of the rich idolater and the poor muslims it's a similar example to those rich group uh, to the rich group and to the poor muslims who were with sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, this is the story about a paradise on uh, on this earth, uh, which many people are deceived by it. So the story deals with the fitna of money and the fitna of wealth, which are the pleasures of this world. So we have to be careful. We will go on with the story. We will read the story, inshallah. So we will. We are on ayah thirty-two. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا رَجُلَيْنِ." So, O Muhammad, present to them the example of two men. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa taala gives examples so to attract our attention. So he gives us stories after stories, and these are not just stories about the old nations. No, we have to take the the lessons, the morals out of these out of these stories. So if there is something that we do not understand, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us an example to clarify it. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to give the example of the two men telling them the story of what they did. So tell the, uh, the, the people what the story of these two men is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا رَجُلَيْنِ جَعَلْنَا لِأَحَدِهِمَا جَنَّتَيْنِ so we we granted to one of these two men, to one of them, two gardens, jannataini min a'nab. So these gardens of grapevines. And we know grapevines are most delicate and uh, <clears throat> important fruit. So this is the story of the two men. One is a believer and the other one was a non-believer, an arrogant person. So the non-believer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him two, two gardens, two beautiful gardens. So he was, uh, he, he forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he just enjoyed the gardens. He even forgot the day after. And the other man is an example of a poor person who was not uh, paying attention to this dunya. Dunya did not deceive him. He understood that dunya is just uh, for this life 
and it will be gone. So the real life will be the day after. So there was there was um, a conversation between these two uh, uh, persons, these two men. So the the arrogant man bought a land with the with his money, his share of money that he inherited. So both of them inherited some money. The the arrogant man bought a land with his share with his money. While the good man <clears throat> decided to do something else. He bought food and fed the poor. He bought clothes and uh, gave it to the poor. So he gave all his money as a charity for the sake of Allah. The arrogant man got married and had children and many servants, but the good man had in mind that he will have al hur al ain was in the in uh, paradise the arrogant man <clears throat> started to lose all he gathered in this worldly life and this is the reason and this is the result of the punishment that allah gave him so how how did that happen? So we said uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala said جعلنا لأحدهما جنتين من أعناب. So there were the, he had two gardens of the grapevines. وحففناهما بنخل. And we had surrounded both gardens with palm trees. So we made a border around the grape trees with palm trees, as if to protect the delicate grape trees. So uh, we know dates and grapes are important types of food for man. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this man these two great gardens. And we placed between them fields of crops. So it was it was not only the dates and grapes, but other crops too. So each of the two gardens produced its fruits. So the output was in maximum. There was no shortage, no less of fruit and other crops. And did not fall short there of anything. The gardens gave best quality and quantity. So it wasn't only quality, but the quantity was amazing. And it wasn't only quantity, it was the quality that was the best. So the land was just the land always appreciates your hard work so it gives you you right if you plant a, uh, a seed it will give you a tree so it will give you a lot the land is generous you do your job and it will reward you now let's stop for a minute and think what does this remind us Think of your kids, imagine them as a land. The more you take care of them when they are young, the best that they become when they get older. We want our kids to be like the young Sahaba who were raised under the care of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Usama was only 17 years old when he led the army, 17 years old. Now imagine in, at our time, a 17 years old uh, young man, what does he do? Once a mom uh, came to me saying, my son is, is 20 years old now and he does not pray, he does not fast, he is not practicing. And then she started crying and crying. And she said, 
it's all my fault. I did not take care of him spiritually when he was young. I never urged him to pray. I myself was a bad example. But a few years ago, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided me and he showed me the way again. So now I feel bad for my son. So the point of this story here is we need to pay attention to our kids since their early childhood. This is similar to plowing the ground, preparing it, planting the seeds, watering the seeds, taking care of the land, taking care of the seeds, taking care of everything that we are preparing, taking of the, the, the weeds that will grow. Only then we can enjoy the fruits that come out of it. So the harder you work in your early life, the better you take care of your responsibilities, the, the, the greater the reward will be later. You have your children as an amana. You have to take care of these, this amana. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here, وَلَمْ تَظْلِمْ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا So the ground is generous. The harder you work in it, the greater the outcome will be. Just do your job. Make dua and Allah will take care of things. But you need to do your job. You need to be initiative. Without your work, your children will not grow up righteously. Guide them. Always be on top of them. Just, just notice what they are doing. Just be uh, in control of everything. And you can. Of course, you have to give them space. But once you prepare them to be ready to take their space, then you can relax. Because at that time, they will be able to know what is right from what is, what is uh, wrong. They will be able to see what is white and what is dark. So things will be clear for them, no gray areas. So prepare them, work hard when they are young. This is when you get to enjoy them when, you, when they get older and when you get older. And we caused to gush forth within them a river. So Allah did not leave it just for the, for the rain to water the ground but he gushed the river through these two gardens. So he made it even easier for the farmer, for the man, for that man who was given these two gardens. And he had fruit. So, and other than fruit. The word thamar does not only mean fruit, the fruit we eat, but Everything that is an outcome is called thamar. He had money, money beyond, the, beyond this. He was not only a farmer, he had gold, he had silver. In, uh, in the Arabic language, when we say, الولد ثمرة أبيه, we mean the children is, the child is the fruit of his father. So the word fruit, as I mentioned, includes it all. It includes everything. It's not just the physical thamar. It is also everything that, include, that is included in this summer. So now the, main, the, uh, the man had everything. But what did that make him? How did that affect him? Was this wealth a reason or a source for him to get closer to Allah? 
and this is how we should we should look at our wealth. This is how we should be thinking. Is wealth getting us closer to Allah or is it pushing us back and away from him? Are we paying its dues? Are we paying zakat? Are we paying sadaqah? We all know that when we do that, then the, 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 uh, our money will increase. It will be purified and it will increase. Are we paying its dues to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are we thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessing that he gave us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala in shakartum la'azidannakum. If you thank me, then I will give, give you more. Are we thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the blessings he has given us? For the blessing of sight, for the blessing of hearing, for the blessing of uh, 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 being uh, perfectly created. Are we thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that? Do we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the center of our heart? Or is he in the, on the margin? Where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in our life? Is dunya deceiving us and getting us attracted? Is it getting us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or are we taking these blessings to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We have to think, we have to think of the poor who don't have the blessings. We have to think of the sick people who don't have the blessings we have. We have to think of everyone around us. And the more we get to contemplate about these blessings, the more we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them. So we should always have in mind that wealth with all its branches, whether money, health, uh, knowledge, everything is a test. And we should know how to use this wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's good to be wealthy. It's good to know uh, uh, to have money, but this money should be in our pockets, should be in our accounts, but never in our heart. Our heart should be the, the place, the clean place, the clean, the pure place for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for the Qur'an, for, for the light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for his righteous people. But not for dunya. It's good to have dunya, but not in our hearts. Some of the sahaba, of the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to be very rich. And they never stacked their money. They used to spend it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people not only spend for the sake of Allah, but they urge other people. There are so and so people who are poor, just give. Who can give? Who can donate? So they would have their reward and the reward and also the reward of everyone who gave for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of the Sahaba, some of the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to prepare a whole army for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's good to be wealthy if we know how to use this wealth. So what happened to those two men? So one of them was so wealthy, the other one was not. 
the weird ones together. And <clears throat> the owner of the two gardens said to his companion, to the poor one in the course of discussion, فَقَالَ لِصَاحِبِهِ وَهُوَ يُحَاوِرُهُ أَنَا أَكْثَرُ مِنْ كَمَالًا وَأَعَزُّ نَفَرًا I am greater in you in, uh, than you in wealth and have a mightier in, uh, entourage. I have more children. Uh, I have uh, more ser uh, servants. Uh, I have everything I want. I have everything I need. So he was arrogant. He was not a good wealthy, uh, wealthy person. So what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this wealth to that person. But what, what did he do with it? He abused it. So, وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ وَهُوَ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ He entered, he went into his garden, having been unjust to himself. So, he was unjust in his disbelief. He was rebellion. He was arrogant. He even denied the day after. So what did he say? He said, I don't think this will ever perish. He was looking at his gardens and he was admiring it. He was allowing himself to, to be deceived with the wealth that he, ha he has, he is uh, 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 watching in front of him. وَمَا أَظُنُّ السَّاعَةَ قَائِمَةً And I don't think the hour will ever come. So he denied that the day after. He denied that the resurrection after death. Then he said, وَلَئِنْ رُدِدْتُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي لَأَجِدَنَّ خَيْرًا مِنْهَا مُنْقَلَبًا And if... If only, if indeed I am brought back to my Lord. So he, he had just a thinking that there was no day after, no resurrection. But let's assume there is. I surely shall find better than, it, than this, than this, the, these blessings that I'm having. I'm sure I will find better than this if I return to Allah. If I return to him. So this was what he said. The, the companion was shocked. He doesn't want his friend to be that bad. And he cared, he cared about uh, about his uh, his friend. So what did he do? He, he tried to tell him that what you are saying is wrong. So he said, So his companion said to him during their discussion while they were conversing together, How can you disbelieve in him? who created you from dust, then from a sperm drop, and then proportioned you as a man. He well prepared you. And these are all milestones. He's reminding his, his friend about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did to him. Lakinna huwa Allahu Rabbi. Lakinna, but as for me, as for my part, I believe that he is Allah, my Lord. The word lakinna is lakin ana. So the hamza was deleted and the na 
was merged into the uh, the noon was merged into the previous noon so we have the noon with shadda lakinna huwa allah rabbi allah is my lord i will never associate wala ushriku bi rabbi ahada and none shall i associate as a partner with my lord i will never say what you are saying but i acknowledge the oneness of allah huwa allah wahda he is the allah he is the one to be worshiped without any associate so what is this man doing he is giving an advice to his friend and again we link this to the advice of the mom that she gives to her children each and every mom would love to see her children better than her the only person who loves something for her for others more than for herself is the mom to her kids if a mom does not read quran she she wants her kids to be able to read quran she would take them to to teachers of quran she would do her best so she would get give them what she could not get for herself so when she when they do something wrong she will advise them she will she will tell them she she because she doesn't only care about their dunya she cares about their akhira too so this is very important we have to take care of the akhira we have to take care of our kids we have always to give them advice and this is the advice that this person has given to his friend he was worrying about his akhira he didn't want him to get uh to get uh, punished but that person that arrogant person insisted so he insisted on on being bad he insisted on on associating other gods with allah he insisted on on doing that so ولولا اذ دخلت جنتك قلت ما شاء الله لا قوه الا بالله ان ترني انا اقل من كمالا وولدا so he is trying to tell him what he should be saying it was better for you to say when you enter your garden ما شاء الله لا قوه الا بالله this is only what allah wills there is no no power but uh, uh, only the power of allah ma sha allah la quwwata illa billah as i mentioned we are reading stories but we have to take the morals that we have to take the lessons of this story this is a lesson for us whenever we have a ni'mah whenever we see something nice we say ma sha allah لا قوة إلا بالله. It's not you that your power made you do this. No, it's Allah سبحانه وتعالى who wanted you to have this. You have a garden. Who created this garden? Who who worked on the garden? Yes, it's you. who took care of the land yes it's you but who created the land allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we have to return the blessings we have to think that we can do nothing if allah does not want it we have to be to know how to talk to allah we have to know how to be polite with allah and we we saw this so many uh, 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 examples in surah al-waqi'ah when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said afara'aytum ma tahrusun fa antum tazra'unahu am nahnu az-zari'un have you seen that seed which you grow is it is it you who made it who make it grow or are we the grower law nasha'u laj'alnahu hutaman if we will we could make it dry 
and you will not be able to do anything. Again, he mentioned something about the water. Allah said, Have you seen the water that you drink? Is it you who brought it down from the clouds? Or is it we who are bringing it down? If we willed, we could make it bitter. So you, you cannot use it. You cannot drink it. Don't you think? Don't, can't you be grateful? And more examples are there in Surah Al-Waqa'ah as we saw earlier. So when you get a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you have something that others don't have, just say, Ma sha Allah, la quwwata illa billah. Never be like, like Qarun. What happened to Qarun? Qarun was so wealthy. So when they said to him, why you don't thank Allah for this? He said, قَالَ إِنَّمَا أُوْتِيْتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عِنْدِي I was only given it because of knowledge I have, because of the hard work, because of the knowledge. So what was the reward? What was the punishment? فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضَ فَمَا كَانَ لَهُ مِنْ فِئَةٍ يَنْصُهُونَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُنْتَصِرِينَ and we caused the earth to swallow him and to swallow his home, swallow his, his wealth. There was for him no company to aid him, no one to help him uh, against the wish of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the point. Just say, Allah. لا قوة إلا بالله فعسى ربي أن يؤتيني خيرا من جنتك So maybe it may be that my Lord will give me something better than your garden You never know Never say that this I am rich, this one is poor. Allah can take your wealth and give it to the poor and make you poor. And will send on it a punishment from heaven, a calamity. Then it will be, then it will become slippery earth. So slippery, so it's not good even for walking. So these two gardens will perish if you do not thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just an advice, just an advice. So what happened? Again? Nothing. That man was so distracted that he could not even understand the advice that his friend was giving him. And sometimes this happens in this dunya when someone has a calamity, when someone has something bad, he is so sad to the degree that he, as if he locked his brain, he, his intellect, that he will not be able to process any word of advice, any word of uh, help that will be given to him. So he's thinking only of the calamity. Oh, my father died. Okay, I... Uh, so so much sadness, so much grief, so much to the point that the person will not understand or will not even hear what other people's uh, people are saying to him. 
And this is what Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the woman who was weeping at the grave of her son when he died. She didn't know that he was Rasulullah before, be, be behind her. So when he was talking to her, he said, just, he was calling her down, but she said, Leave me alone. You didn't, you, didn't, you didn't have the same problem that I have. You don't have the same calamity that I just had. She didn't know that he was Rasulullah. And later when they told her, she went to him apologizing. Ya Rasulullah, I didn't know that you were the one who was talking. And he said very wise words. He said, you have to practice patience at the time of the calamity, not later. And when you practice patience, you have to practice it fully. Your heart should be patient. Your mind should be patient. You should be patient. Accepting what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us has put us through is the first step of practicing patience. So we accept, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, we had an accident, he had an accident, his, his leg was broken, his back was not. He, he lost his, his finger, but he did not lose his eye. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even at the, at the hard times. This will be when you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time, then Allah will help you during the hard time. أو يصبح ماؤها غورا فلن تستطيع له طلبا so these things might happen to your land or even to your garden or even the water disappears into the earth. It will not be flowing anymore. It will not be gushing anymore so that you will never be able to seek it by any means. You cannot dig down to get water. You cannot, you, there is no means to get the water out. This might happen again. That non-believer was so arrogant, was so my, mm, uh, uh, heedless that he did not understand anything that was said to him. So what happened? His gardens were ruined. His fruits were encircled. Everything was ruined. When he saw that, he was clasping his hands together in a gesture of regret and grief for the wealth he had lost, for the time he had invested in his land, for, for everything that he, he has and he lost. Everything was destroyed. So he said he wished only that time when he saw that he as if he was sleeping and he woke up. Only at that time, he said, would I had ascribed no partners to my Lord. I wish had not, I had not associated anyone with my Lord. Only at that time. So we should be careful. We should not be waiting and waiting and waiting until we are at that time. No. وَلَمْ تَكُنْ لَهُ فِئَةٌ يَنْصُرُونَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ 
he had no group, no clan, no children, no one to aid him, to help him against Allah or against what Allah wished again. No one to prevent what Allah wanted to happen. And he could not defend himself. Nothing. He was a loser. No one would be able to help him. So he is the one who would just experience the result of what he did. No one to help. When Allah wants something, then it will be. And Allah does not care if all people are helping one person. If Allah does not want that thing to happen, it will not happen. That's it. واعلم أن الأمة لو اجتمعت على أن ينفعوك بشيء لم يكتبه الله لك لن ينفعوك بذلك. Just remember that if all creatures were together to help you get something that Allah did not predestine to you, they will not be able to do it. That's it. It's Allah's order, Allah's wish, whatever Allah wants, that will happen. You want something, I want something, but Allah will do what he wants. What does this mean? Then the authority is completely for Allah, the truth. We can read the word wilaya and walaya. What does this? How can we do that? <clears throat> al walaya uh, is al wali al ladiyansuruka, the person who would give you victory who would help you, that's al-wali. Al-wilaya, in the day after, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ This is al-wilaya. Who is the uh, control today? لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَارِ It's only for Allah. So what happens, <clears throat> Hunalika, at that time, when everything happens, when people go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when, when they are there, the losers will know that they wronged themselves badly. They will understand what they have done in their, in their, in their life. They will know how, how bad their deeds were. And they will feel sorry for themselves. They will feel sorry for the punishment that they will have. And they will feel sorry for, for losing the chance to enjoy the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the winners. So they are loser, loser. But what would feeling sorry be a help? Nothing. They would beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for another chance to go back to dunya, to do good, and then to come back. But Allah will say, no, no. That was a word. It was a word that he said. Allah sent prophets, gave intellect, 
So a human being can choose what is good and what's, what's wrong. He is the best to reward and the best for the final end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highly rewards the good deeds and justly punish. So this is the story of the two people, of the two companions, of the believer and the non-believer. There are so many uh, points that we can get from this story. And a good one is to remember who to take as a friend. عاشر من ينهضك إلى الله حاله ويدلك على الله مقاله Be friend with a person who, whose state, الحال, will get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whose words will always remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the type of a friend you should have. Do not be deceived with the blessing, but always remember the one who gave you the blessing. Always thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the blessings that he has given you. Do not look up at those people who are richer than you. Do not wish that you have the wealth they have. Pray for them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, bless their blessings, but, and wish for yourself something that is similar and always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you guidance to perform his right in your wealth, to do zakah, to do sadaqah, to give people, to be good to others, never to get proud, never to get arrogant. So these are some of the lessons of this story. And inshallah, we will go on with the uh, next week, inshallah, with the sixth part of the tafsir of Surah Al-Kahf. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Ya rabbana laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wa jihika wa azimi sultanik. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك بسم الله Last time we talked about the uh, uh, story of the two people of the two gardens. So we, we saw at the end how the non-believer lost everything. All his work, all his money, everything he had was lost. And only at that time he remembered that he shouldn't have associated another God with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, sh that he should have uh, believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So today, inshallah, we will be going on. We are uh, on ayah 45. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا إِنْ أَنْزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَاخْطَلَتَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ فَأَصْبَحَ هَشِيمًا تَذْرُوهُ الْرِيَاحِ So mention to them, Ya Muhammad, 
the parable of the worldly life. It's like the water which we send down from the sky. And with this water, the vegetation mingles and becomes fresh and green. But after a while, when, it, when the season is uh, uh, done, then this greenery would become dry and then it will be broken into pieces, which the wind will scatter. So this is all that Allah is able to do. So this dunya is like this water that's coming down from the sky. So now imagine this image. Water coming down on the ground. The ground gets uh, uh, watered. So a lot of greenery. But later on, this is gone. What does this remind us of? It reminds us of the human himself. Born, raised, got big, got old, and then died. This is life. As if someone who is traveling, got tired, stopped, rested under the tree, and then went on with his life. But at the end, that person is dying. What is he taking with him? Before ta talking about what he is taking with him, let's talk about life itself. So we said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa kana Allah wa ala kulli shay'in muqtadira Allah is able to do everything. He is able to give and to prevent, to raise and to humiliate, to benefit and not to benefit. Al-mal wal banuna zinatul hayat dunya Wealth and children are the atonement of, of life of this worldly life. Now think of the first two words, al-mal, wealth, wal banun, children. The word wealth, money, anything, so is said pre before children. Why? Because ma ma money and wealth is more important than children in a way that each and every person has, has wealth. Even the poorest person has some clothes on him and this is his wealth. But not everyone has children. Some people do not get married. Some people will, have, uh, will get married but will not have children. But before getting married, they should have the money to pay to, uh, for the dowry, so to get married, and then they will have children if Allah predestined for them to have children. So zina means it's, it's adornment. It is not necessary. So wealth and money are zina, adornment. When a husband gets married and they don't get children, then he would be upset, she, the wife would be upset, everyone would be uh, uh, unhappy, and they would try to convince the man to get another wife, and they were... So what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give, would give uh, children to some people, but he will, he will deprive others from, being, to, from having children. He will give girls to some people. He will not give boys. He will give boys and not girls. The point is the 
But man should accept everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him. Does he give him children? Does he not give him children? Does he give him wealth? Does he not give him wealth? There are people who are not married, but they are very happy. They are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are people who, ha who have the money and who have the children, but they are not happy. Sometimes the, 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 the wealth will be used against him because he, he, he does not fulfill Allah's right in his wealth. He doesn't do the sadaqah, he doesn't do the, the, the zakah, so his, his money will not have any barakah. He will say, okay, I got my salary uh, today. A few days later, you will see that the salary is all gone. Where, where did it vanish? There is no baraka in the money. Check what's the reason. Is it halal money? Is it uh, money, legal money? Is it what's going on? Where is the baraka? Are you fulfilling the uh, the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this money? Are you fulfilling the, the right of the poor people in this money? Giving sadaqah? Sadaqah always blesses the wealth and increases it. And every day, angels will tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, <clears throat> they will make the dua, Allahumma a'ti munfiqan khalafan wa a'ti mumsikan talafa. Ya Allah, give the one who is giving for your sake abundant, abundantly and deprive that one who keeps his money for himself. Al-malu wal-banuna zinatul hayati dunya. So when people do not get children, are they happy with that? With what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had decreed on them? They'll do their best on different methods, trying to get children, but khalas, there is no way. Allah did not uh, write for them to have any children. Uh, do they accept Allah's wish or not? This is the adornment of the life. It's not necessity of life. But what is the necessity? The necessity is to live according to Allah's will. The, the necessity is to live as per what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for you. To accept whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. To say alhamdulillah for everything that you have and you don't have. وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتِ خَيْرٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ أَمَلًا So what are the baqiyat al-salihat? Al-baqiyat al-salihat are the good, righteous deeds that will last for you till the day after. So these are the, the reward that you have given for yourself, that you have... Uh, uh, say it for yourself and the hope that you will have in the day after. So everything that was mentioned before al-baqiyat al-salihat is from dunya, al-mal, al-banoon, wealth, children, everything you have, this is for dunya. When someone dies, he will not take anything from that with him except al-baqiyat al-salihat. Once uh, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam slaughtered a sheep and <clears throat> Sayyidina Aisha knew that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loves the shoulder meat so she distributed everything to the poor and she gave the poor everything except for the shoulder and when Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked her what have you done what have you, what have you kept for yourself what have you kept she said ذَهَبَ كُلُّهَا so I distributed everything except for the shoulder. But Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, بَقِيَ كُلُّهَا سِوَى الْكَتِفِ All of it was, uh, 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 was left 
for us except for the shoulder. And he is looking for the day after. So the reward, we got the reward that we of the me that we distributed. So the hope is to have in the akhirah what, what will get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To work in this dunya for the akhirah. And remember that this dunya is going to vanish no matter what. How? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَوْمَ نُسَيِّرُ الْجِبَالَ وَتَرَ الْأَرْضَ بَارِزَةً Remember the day we shall cause the mountains to pass away. The mountains that are holding the earth steady will, will vanish, will become like uh, uh, like wool fluffed up. This is what Allah says in Surah Al-Qari'ah. In another surah, Allah says, the, the mountains will be blown away. So they will not be in place. And they will be leveled plain. So there, there will be, the earth will be all plain, nothing on it. No mountains, no valleys, no river, nothing. There will not be any sign on earth. And on that day, no one will be hidden. No one will be absent. وَحَشَرْنَاهُمْ فَلَمْ نُغَادِرْ مِنْهُمْ أَحَدًا And we shall gather them all so that we will, we will leave none behind. قُلْ إِنَّ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَالْآخِرِينَ لَمَجْمُعُونَ إِلَى مِقَاتِ يَوْمٍ مَعْلُومٍ Tell them, the, 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 all, the, the previous people, the, the last people, everyone will be gathered, will be resurrected for a certain day. No one will be missing on that day. And they will be set before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in rows. So all creation will be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah, will, Allah says in Surah Al-An'am, Ayah 94, وَلَقَدْ جِئْتُمُونَا كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةٌ Now indeed, you have come to us as we created you for the first time. So Sayyidah Isha would ask Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, أَيَنظُرُ بَعْضُنَا إِلَىٰ بَعْضٍ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Should we, each of us, we will be bare naked? We will, are we going to look at each other? But Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لِكُلِّ مُرِئٍ شَأْنُ يُغْنِي No Aisha, no one will be caring about anyone. Everyone will be concerned about himself only. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ شَأْنٌ يُغْنِي Man will flee from everyone, from everyone he knows. It's a heavy day. يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ وَتَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارَ وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارَ It's a fearful day. Everyone will flee from each other. You will see people as if they are drunk, but they are not drunk. They are so scared on that day. In Surah Al-Fajr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Your Lord had come and the angels rank up on rank, rows after rows. Their people will be set before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order. بَلْ زَعَمْتُمْ أَلَّا نَجْعَلَ لَكُمْ مَوْعِدًا Tell them, you, you thought that we had, we had no appointment with you? We had appointed no meeting for you? 
Zaamtum, they thought that there is no resurrection. They thought there is no reckoning. And that's why they, they exceeded in transgressing. The book will be produced. Everyone will get their book. So the book of deeds, which contains all the records, everything is recorded in that book, major and minor, significant or insignificant, great or small. Something you said, something you talked, something you looked at, something you went to, every single thing will be listed, will be recorded. فَتَرَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِي and you will see the criminals, the wrongdoers, fearful of that which is therein. Fearful of the evil deeds they have done. They, uh, on that day, they will say, وَيَقُولُونَ يَا وَيْلَنَا يَا وَيْلَتَنَا يَا وَيْلَنَا They will they will be so scared. They will be so scared. What happened? So, يَقُولُونَ يَا وَيْلَتَنَا مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ Woe to us. They're expressing words of regret for having wasted their lives. What happened? They will say, مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا What sort of a book is this which leaves neither a small thing nor a big thing but has recorded it? No matter how small the action is, it is recorded. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا ولو أن تلقى أخاك بوجه طليق Do not belittle anything, any good thing, even if you just smile to your brother. Even if you smile to the people you know or you don't know. This is sadaqa, keep it for yourself. Give anything to be shielded from fire, even if it's half of a date, not a date, half of a date. And we know the story of the woman who, who was uh, thrown into hellfire because of a kitten that she kept that she imprisoned, that she would not let her eat, and she tortured that, that kitten. So never ever say, oh, this is a small sin. Never. Never say this is a small sin, and I will, I will ask Allah for forgiveness. لا تنظر إلى صغر المعصية ولكن انظر إلى من عصيت Do not look at how trivial this sin is but look who did you see who who did you commit the sin against allah said then don't do it and you are doing it it will be recorded and it will be recorded with honesty and justice <clears throat> and in the day after allah is going to to scale all the deeds and they will find all that they did present, good and evil. The scale was will, will be set to scale all the deeds. This is Surah Al-Qiyamah. And everywhere in the Quran, there are so many examples about Yawm Al-Qiyamah and how people are going to be, to, to, to be presented with their deeds. So man will be informed of what he sent forward and what he had be, left behind. And your Lord treats 
everyone with, with justice. Allah never treats anyone with injustice. He will judge between his creatures for all their deeds. Even animals. Allah will, will get them on the day of judgment. Why did you uh, uh, did bad to this animal and he will give he will be so just between them and then they will be dust at that time when the non-believer would see that the animals would become dust then he would say oh I wish I am dust Allah will treat everyone with justice. And not only justice, guess what? Mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created mercy and divided it into 100 portions. He cut down only one portion to the earth. And this is what, what we see between a mom taking care of her children, between the animal mom taking care of her babies, between People taking care of each other. This one needs help. Someone will help this one. Even if they are not Muslims, they will help each other. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًا يَرَى If you do something good, then you will see good. If you do something bad, you will you will you will see exactly the same portion as you have done. Justice. But remember, no one is going to enter Jannah with his deeds. And this is what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And they asked him, Wala anta ya Rasulullah, not even you, ya Rasulullah. He said, Wala ana illa an yatagamadani Allah bi rahmati unless Allah had his mercy upon me. So we all are getting into Jannah by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But our deeds will be the reason where we will be placed in heaven. Lower heaven or highest heaven? Or Al Firdaus Al A'la? Is it the first uh, palace on the, uh, on the entrance? Or is it Al Firdaus Al A'la? So when you, when you make dua, do not say, oh Allah, I want to enter Jannah. You are asking the most merciful, the most generous, so ask for the highest. Always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I want to be in the Firdaus al-A'la. I want to be with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I want to be with, with al, 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 the, the messengers. I want, to, I want to enjoy the highest you can, you can give me. Ask. You are asking the most generous. Know how to ask. Know what to ask. Don't ask for trivial things. Allah is listening. Allah is saying, Ud'uni astajib lakum. I am listening to you. I will fulfill your prayers, but, but you have to ask. You have to pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for, for valuable things. So this is how the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to have the just uh, uh, balances we shall set up balances of justice on the day of judgment so this is the image of the day of judgment now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding people who did not believe him he's reminding them of the first time he created Adam alayhi salam. So what did he say? وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسَقَ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ And remember when we said to the angels, prostrate yourselves unto Adam. 
So they did, except for I Iblis. And we, Iblis was of the jinn and he disobeyed the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So will you take Will you take him and his offsprings as protectors and helpers rather than me while they are your enemies? So Allah is reminding people that when he created man, he asked the angels to prostrate, and they did. The angels are created so they would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would not disobey him in any action, in any order. They do not have the choice of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While jinn, they have that option. So Shay Iblis chose to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, خَلَقْتَنِي مِن نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِن طين. You created me of fire and you created man of clay. I am much better than him. And this was his, his problem. He was proud. And pride leads to hellfire. لا يدخل أحد الجنة وفي قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر. None will enter heaven and there is a speck of pride in his heart. So why, why you man preferred to obey shaitan and to listen to shaitan who, who gave an oath to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will do his best just to get man astray. There is still a chance to repent, so do it. Do not lose this chance now. Every night before you go to bed, just say, Ya Allah, I am repenting to you. Allahumma inni tubtu ilayka faghfir li. Ya Allah, I am repenting, forgive all my sins. And Allah accepts the, the, the person who asks for repentance. مَا لَمْ يُغَرْغِرْ يَقْبَلُ اللَّهُ تَوْبَةَ الْعَبْدِ مَا لَمْ يُغَرْغِرْ يُغَرْغِرْ The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the repentance of his slave before his, before saying it on his death, on his bed, uh, on his death bed. So do not delay. You have, you have a long time don't waste it use it for the for pleasing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do whatever you know this will please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do it if you know that this action will not please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it will please shaitan don't do it so what an evil is the exchange that people would the wrongdoers would do when they replace the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by what shaitan wants. مَا أَشْهَدْتُهُمْ خَلْقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ They did not witness the creation of the heavens and the earth as they did not exist at that time. وَلَا خَلْقَ أَنفُسِهِمْ Not even their own creation. وَمَا كُنْتُ مُتَّخِذَ الْمُضِلِّينَ عَدُدَ nor did I take those who misled as a helper. Al-Adud is someone who you can depend on. So Allah did not depend on anyone when he created the, the skies and the earth. He did not take any helper when he created people. So... There are no partners for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why are you taking 
taking these people, these, you are listening to shaitan, you are taking, you are listening to the shaitan of ins, the, the devil of amongst the humans. Why are you listening to them? Why are you obeying them? So Allah will say, وَيَوْمَ يَقُولُ نَادُوا شُرَكَائِيَ الَّذِينَ زَعَمْتُمْ Ya Muhammad, re remember the day, on that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to say, call those partners of mine, remind them that they will be asked to call the, those who associated with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those whom they worshipped instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they, they will, Allah would say, call those partners of mine whom you claimed. You took them as partners. Call them now. Some people worshipped the sun. Some people worshipped other people. Some people obeyed shaitan. Some people, so call them. So this is an order. And remember, look at this irony here. فَدَعَوْهُمْ so they called them. So this was the only order that they obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. They did not obey all the orders that Allah has given them, but they obeyed only this order. So they called those people, those partners, فَلَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَهُمْ But they will not answer them. They did not answer them. And we shall put destruction between them, between the believers and the non-believers. So the people of guidance and the people of non-guidance, uh, non those who were misguided, they will be separated. And what will happen to those who did not believe? So the criminals shall, shall, shall see the fire and what will happen to, me, to them. Only then they will realize that they cannot escape being thrown into it. They thought that they will be, they, it will not be for them, but they realized that they were mistaken. That will, so when, when, uh, and that by itself intensify, will intensify their anxiety and their distress. Actually, looking into the hellfire is by itself a punishment, a big punishment. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah uh, in Surah Tabara, Ida ra'athum min makanin ba'idin sami'u laha taghayyuzan wa zafira. When the hellfire sees them from a distance place, they will hear its fearful roaring sound. So both parties, the hellfire and the non-believers, both looked and see. They look at each other and they see each other. So the anticipation and fear of punishment is in itself a real punishment. And they will find no way of escaping it, no way of fleeing. It will be inevitable. It will be their place forever. There is no end. That's it. وَلَقَدْ صَرَّفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثَلٍ وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ جَدَلًا And indeed, we have given every kind of example in this Qur'an. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the Qur'an that he has revealed for mankind. But man is ever more quarrelsome, more arguer than anything. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the same story in the Quran many times. So he, for example, he mentioned Surah Musa. So many surahs in the Quran mentions uh, the story of Sayyidina Musa. But each of the of these ayahs, each of the places that was mentioned, talks about it from a certain angle. And that's why the Quran is a miracle that the more you read it, the more you understand it. Nothing like the Quran. The more you read it, the more you feel, oh, I want to read it more. The more you understand, you say, oh, I want to understand deeper. So it's not like any other book. If you read it one time, you can read it twice, three times. If you like it, you will, you will read it 10 times, but that's it. But the Muslims are so attached to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they know that this is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They know that when they want to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be reading his words. They will be reading his book. And you know, so many people do their best to memorize the Quran. So there is a connection between man and the Quran. And this is what we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep this connection strong between us and the Quran. وَلَقَدْ صَرَّفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لِلنَّاسِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثَلٍ وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ جَدَلًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained everything in this Quran. It's a complete system, it's a complete program that will explain the, the right path and the wrong path. So people have the intellect to use, to choose to choose what what to do. But there are some people, some people who who argue. They argue just to explain themselves, just to convince others with themselves, just to convince others with their ideas. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if there is higher in arguing, then say it. If you know it's a dead end, do not argue. Do not get into arguments. And nothing prevents men from believing while the guidance has come to them. However, rebellion and of disbelievers in ancient times and in more recent times rejected the truth, even when they witnessed clear signs. Even when they witnessed proofs, they asked Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, to provide them with what, what shows his truthfulness. But even though they did, not, they did not believe because they refused faith after, after, uh, after witnessing the signs. So they asked Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi and they asked uh, and and uh, previous nations also asked their prophets just to show them punishment if they are truthful. So cause a piece of the of the heaven uh, to fall on us if you are truthful. This was one of the requests. Bring Allah's torment upon us if you are one of the truthful. Another request. So what prevented people from being believers when they got the, the guidance and to ask Allah for forgiveness? Except that the ways of the ancient be repeated with them. What happened to the ancient nations? They were destroyed. Their overwhelming punishment destroying every last one of them. So this was 
the what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did for them. He removed them all. He destroyed them all. And this is the difference between the punishment of the people of the previous nations, of the previous messengers, and that of the people of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Previous messengers, their nations were destroyed while they were alive. But Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was making dua for his ummah. That Allah will not destroy them, that Allah might get righteous people out of those non-believers. So this is by itself uh, a comforting, Allah is comforting Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not to, work, to overburden himself with grief over those people who did not believe him. Because there were others who did not believe their, their messengers. وَمَا نُرْسِلُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here, we, do, we send not the messengers except that they are bearers of good news and they are warners. Before the punishment, messengers give good news to those who follow them and they warn those who oppose them. If you do good, you will find good. If you do bad, you will find bad. You will be punished. There will be winners and there will be losers. So non-believers would argue with falsehood in order to refute the truth thereby. They try to weaken the truth that the messengers brought but they cannot. And they took my proofs and my evidence, my miracles sent with the messengers. They took all that for jest. They were mocking everything. They were making fun of all my signs. And they were warned that they will, they will be punished, but they did not listen to, the, to that. وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ ذُكِّرَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِ فَأَعْرَضَ عَنْهَا وَنَسِيَ مَا قَدَّمَتْ يَدَاهِ And who does more wrong than he who is reminded of the signs of his Lord but turns away from them, forgetting what his hands has, ha, have sent forth? إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ أَكِنَّةً أَنْ يَفْقَهُ Truly, we have set covers over their hearts, lest they should understand and they, they, this, this Quran. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khatam Allahu ala qulubihim wa ala sam'ihim wa ala absarihim ghishawa. Allah has set a seal upon their hearts and upon their, and upon their hearing and over their vision there is a veil. وَإِن تَدْعُهُمْ إِلَى الْهُدَى فَلَيْ يَهْتَدُوا إِذَنْ أَبَدًا And if you call them to guidance, even then, they will never be guided. وَرَبُّكَ الْغَفُورُ ذُو الرَّحْمَةِ لَوْ يُؤَاخِذُهُمْ بِمَا كَسَبُوا لَعَجَّلَ لَهُمُ الْعَذَابِ بَلْ لَهُمْ مَوْعِدٌ لَنْ يَجِدُوا مِنْ دُونِهِ مَوْئِلًا And your Lord is most forgiving. He is the owner of mercy. Were he to call them to account for what they have earned, then they surely would have hastened their punishment. But they have their appointment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this time, this for this time, there is no escape. اللهم لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين 
والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح لي نفتح العارفين يا أرحم الراحمين uh, بسم الله Today inshallah we are going to uh, uh, continue with our seventh series, uh, session of the series of Tafsir Surah Al-Kahf inshallah uh, last time we stopped at uh, the point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his mercy, he is not going to punish those who transgressed in this dunya immediately. Just out of his mercy, he is giving them uh, a chance that if they want to repent, there is still time. Because once death comes, repentance stops. So there is a chance for those who want to change, for those who want to take advantage of this, of this uh, uh, time that Allah has given them. And this is out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we, uh, we stopped at uh, Ayah 59 last time. وَتِلْكَ الْقُرَىٰ أَهْلَكْنَاهُمْ لَمَّا ظَلَمُوا وَجَعَلْنَا لِمَهْلِكِهِمْ مَوْعِدًا And those, the, and, uh, those towns, we destroyed them. And then uh, we destroyed them when they did wrong. This is the, the punishment of the people previously to the nation, who came previously to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam. Because as I mentioned last time, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to punish the people of, the, of a messenger while he is alive, then he is going to destroy the whole tribe. We saw how, what happened to the people of uh, Lut alayhi salam, to the people of Nuh alayhi salam. Allah saved the righteous ones and destroyed the whole, the whole uh, uh, group of people, uh, all the people. But out of his mercy, Allah is not going to uh, do that for the people of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, just to give them time, to give them a chance to repent if they want to do so before death. There has been a fixed time for the destructions of those uh, uh, of those nations who belied their messengers. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to tell us the story of Sayyidina Musa and what happened to him, how he thought that he himself is the, um, the, the person who knows the, everything and there is no one who has more knowledge than him what happened. So let's go, inshallah, with this story. Once Sayyidina Musa was uh, 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 giving a khutbah, and um, he was asked, who is the most knowledgeable? So he said, I am without referring knowledge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him that there is someone who is more knowledgeable than you. And that was the answer when Musa alayhi salam talked to Allah. And we know that Sayyidina Musa used to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anytime he, want, he wanted. So he said, I was asked this question, I said, I am. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, no, you have, there is someone who is more knowledgeable than you. So when Sayyidina Musa heard that, he said to himself that I should, I should learn from that man. I should know what, what I don't know. So 
he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how can I meet that person? Allah told him that you will find him at the junction of the two uh, rivers. When the two rivers meet, you will find him there. And he said, how can I, how can I, ta- how can I know where that place is? And Allah told him, you take a, a, a fish in a vessel and you, you go, you walk until the place. When you, when you lose this fish, then you know that you will find this person in that area. So Sayyidina Musa did that. And what happened now? Sayyidina Musa said, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِفَتَاهُ لَا أَبْرَحُ حَتَّى أَبْلُغَ الْمَجْمَعَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ أَوْ أَمْضِيَ حُقُوبًا So, Sayyidina Musa took his uh, uh, boy servant with him, Sayyidina Yusha' bin Noon. So he was, uh, Yusha' alayhi salam was with him uh, to serve him, but also to learn from Sayyidina Musa. He was not just a servant. He was someone who was seeking knowledge also. So he said, Sayyidina Musa said to his vice servant, I will not give up. I will keep going. I will keep walking until I reach the junction of the two seas, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told me about. Or until I had to travel uh, for, for a long time. The word hukuba in Arabic is plural for uh, the singular, and the singular word is hukba. And the hukba means a long period of time. And it was uh, thought that this period is about 70 or 80 years old, uh, or 80 years. The span of, of the hukba is 70 or 80 years. So when Sayyidina Musa said, hukuba, he made that word plural. So the least of the plural is three, okay? So that means, let's consider the hukba is 70 years. Uh, 70 multiplied by three is 210. So this was what he said, what Sayyidina Musa said to his servant boy, I will keep walking. Even if I have to walk 210 years to meet uh, the person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me about. And we know, we knew earlier that when Quraysh wanted to, to check on Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then they said, they, they asked him uh, several questions. And one of them, was about the, uh, uh, the, the people of the cave, uh, the man who uh, wandered around the world and about the spirit. So the point is Sayyidina Musa said, did not give an answer because he does not speak from his own inclination. If he doesn't know the answer, he wouldn't, wouldn't answer it. And that's why he said, I will answer you tomorrow. So it lasted 15 days until the, on the, on the last day, he said, inshallah. Now, my point is, Sayyidina Muhammad did not have the knowledge, all the knowledge. The same thing, Sayyidina Musa did not have the, the knowledge. And that's why he wanted to learn more. And that's why he wanted to go to see that, to meet that righteous person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told him about. So he, taught, he promised himself to go walking, even if it took him a long time. Now, this means, this gives us a lot of lessons. The most important thing is that we have to seek knowledge. We have to remember that the more we learn, the more we realize that we are ignorant. We know nothing. Allah's knowledge is vast. 
we, we, we know nothing. Some people say, okay, I'm going to be uh, a lawyer. Another would say, I want to be a doctor. Another would say, I want to be a, a, a space person. So each one of this is a science by itself, but no one knows everything. Allah will give special knowledge to special people so that you might see wonders on those people. So if you do not have something, do not deny what others might have. Some, sometimes you would say, MashaAllah, this is a Mubarak person. This is a blessed person. He knows a lot. And the way he speaks is not, is not the way that we speak. Remember, there is something called Al-Ilmu al -ladunni. The divine knowledge. And Allah will give this, uh, some of this knowledge to certain people. So here, Sayyidina Musa wanted to go to meet that righteous person to learn from him. How did we know that it was al -ilm al -ladunni? We knew that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, in uh, uh, later, we're going to get there in a moment. So now what happened? Sayyidina Musa started walking with uh, Sayyidina Yusha. And of course, when you want to go on a trip, you prepare yourself for that trip. So they took their food. And Allah told him that you take a fish with you. And when you lose this fish, then you will see the place where you, you, that would be the meeting place. And there is a lesson here. When we are going on a trip, we take something to help us along the way. We take something to eat, we take something to rest, we, we might have a tent, we might have uh, water, we might have food, we might have several things to help us during this journey, during this trip. Okay, now look at the journey that we are taking towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a long journey. And to be able to go, we have to have pr some provision. Our provision is the provision for the soul. We have to take care of our soul during this journey. It's not only our body. It's not only food. It's not only drink. It's not, not just to, to wear some clothes. No, we need to take care of our heart. We need to understand, we need to remember that if our heart is sound, then our journey is going to be sound. If our heart is good, then our journey is going to be successful. It's a long journey we are taking. We have to have something to help us along this journey. We have to have our reading of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to have a good connection to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to have a good connection to, to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to send salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to, to pray special prayers before Fajr to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we know this is the closest time that Allah is uh, to, to us. We have to get nearer also to him. We need special care. We need special provision along our journey. And we are depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that help and that care. So now Sayyidina Musa started with his journey. فَلَمَّا بَلَغَا مَجْمَعَ بَيْنِهِمَا 
نسيا حوتهما فاتخذ سبيله في البحر سربا so by Uh, uh, when they when they reach the junctions uh, the junction of the two seas, they forgot their fish. And if we have to look into the Arabic word here, nesia, the alif at the end of the verb means both of them dual. So how come that both of them forgot? Who is responsible for the food, to prepare the food and to serve the food is the uh, boy servant. But what happened is that both of them forgot about the fish. This gives us a clue that even the leader should not leave everything for the servants for the for those who are who take care of the of the caravan why because he should be responsible about everything when they are ready to leave he should check the area after they leave did they forget anything that's this this uh, thing this small thing is not the servant's work it's the leader's work So both of them forgot about this fish and what happened to this fish. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here uh, made the Sayyidina Musa when they reached uh, the, the place of the junction uh, of the two seas. Uh, they reached this area and they felt sleepy so both of them slept and there was a, a special rock that they slept at so the fish sensed the that this is something uh, uh, special This is something that would give it life. So it jumped, it jumped. And what happened to it, the fish moved vigorously and jumped and took its way on the sand, on the sand until it reached the river. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given life to this fish. And it is said that there was a spring of life at that uh, uh, area. And that's why the, uh, the fish sensed, felt that uh, spring of life. So a drop of water of that uh, uh, spring came to the fish And that's what made the fish get life again and it moved. Now what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did, we said that the, um, the fish uh, went on the sand until it reached the sea. So what happened here? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made that trace Uh, that uh, clear and kept it clear. So when Musa alayhi salam and his boy, uh, his servant boy uh, just woke up, uh, they started walking again. So they for and uh, Yusha knew that the fish was not there, but he forgot to tell Sayyidina Musa about that now they they went uh, a little further and Sayyidina Musa السلام, they felt hungry so he asked his uh, servant to give them the, the, the fish to eat at that time 
Yusha alayhi salam remembered that he forgot to tell uh, Musa about the uh, uh, what happened to the fish. So when he told him, he said, this is what we wanted. So what did, what did happen? Now, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا جَاوَزَا So when they went further, قَالَ لِفَتَاهُ آتِنَا غَدَاءَنَا لَقَدْ لَقِينَا مِنْ سَفَرِنَا هَذَا نَصَبًا Musa said to his boy servant, bring us our meal. Truly, we have suffered in this, uh, in this journey. We are hungry. So, Yusha alayhi salam said, قَالَ أَرَأَيْتَ إِذْ أَوَيْنَا إِلَى الصَّخْرَةِ فَإِنِّي نَسِيتُ الْحُوتَ أَنْ أَذْكُرَهُ He said, do you remember? Do you remember when we went, when we uh, took ourselves to the, when we stopped at the, uh, when we stopped at the um, place where, uh, where we rested? قَالَ أَرَأَيْتَ إِذْ أَوَيْنَا إِلَى الصَّخْرَةِ فَإِنِّي نَسِيتُ الْحُوتِ فَإِنِّي نَسِيتُ الْحُوتِ So I forgot, I indeed forgot to tell you about the fish. وَمَا أَنْسَانِيهُ إِلَّا الشَّيْطَانُ أَنْ أَذْكُرَهُ None but shaitan made me forget to remember it. Or made me for, uh, shaitan made me forget uh, to, uh, for, uh, to tell you that we lost it. So, Shaitan. Now, وَاتَّخَذَ سَبِيلَهُ فِي الْبَحْرِ عَجَبَ And it, this fish took its course. So, its path into the sea was a strange way. What does ajaba mean? Strange, something strange. So the story by itself is strange. The fish that we prepared to eat got life again and it went until it reached the sea and jumped into the water. So Sayyidina Musa here said, قَالَ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنَّا نَبْغِ فَارْتَدَّا عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِ مَا قَصَصَ so Musa alayhi salam said, that's what we have been seeking. This is what we have been looking for. They wanted to know exactly where the, they missed or they lost the fish because that was the place where Allah told him that he will be meeting Al-Khadr alayhi salam. So they went back their footsteps. Qasasa. So they were following the traces. What happened? They found. فَوَجَدَا عَبْدًا مِّنْ عِبَادِنَا فَوَجَدَا عَبْدًا مِّنْ عِبَادِنَا آتَيْنَاهُ رَحْمَةً مِّنْ عِنْدِنَا وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا عِلْمًا So they found one of our servants, Abdan min ibadina. Remember the word servant. And this is a servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when someone is a servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he is at the highest ranks. Remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, got Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam into the Isra. He said, Subhanallahi asra bi abdihi. Subhanallah. He was the one who got Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to go up into the heavens. Abdihi bi abdihi. So being a servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a, the highest of honor. But being a servant to people is humility. So they found one of our servants, Abdam min ibadina. What about this, per this person, this servant? 
on whom we have bestowed mercy from us. وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا عِلْمًا And whom we had taught knowledge from us. And this is what I just mentioned. الْعِلْمُ الْلَدُنِّي The divine knowledge. The divine knowledge is the highest of, the, of all the knowledge. And it's something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a, a secret that Allah gives into the heart. So they found a man and he was a blessed man. And Musa greeted him and Musa introduced himself. Sayyidina Khadir told, asked him, are you the Musa of the children of Israel? And we know Israel is Sayyidina Yaqub. It's another name for Sayyidina Yaqub. And Musa said, yes, I am. Or are you the Musa of the children of Israel? The, the prophet who was sent to the people of Israel. Of Israel. Okay. So now, what happened later after that? Now pay attention to the to the to what Sayyidina Musa said. هل أتبعك على أن تعلمني مما علمت رشدا? Can I, can I, or may I follow you? And you will teach me from what you have been taught of sound judgment. You have the knowledge I, I don't have. You have the knowledge that I don't know. هل أتبعك? Can I? May I? This is something, this is the politeness, how you have to be with your teacher. The teacher should have a special respect. And this is called adabu ta'allum. So you ask politely. You, you, you just humiliate yourself to the, to the teacher because he has the knowledge you want to learn from, from him. And what about if someone has the divine knowledge? You should show uh, so much respect for your teacher. He said, you will not be able to have patience with me. And how can you have patience for what you do not encompass in knowledge? Sayyidina Khadr knows that Musa is, uh, salam, is a prophet, is a messenger, and that he is a person of Allah. He is a friend of Allah. So he said, you have your way, I have my way. You cannot be patient with what I, I, I do. So this is the condition that, uh, that, that is there. Both of them are on different paths. Each has his own way. You will not have patience because you as a messenger would give your judgment according to the outer things. I, as a person of Allah, would give my judgment according to the heart, according to the inner things that I know and you don't know. How can you be patient? So Musa salam says, Satij qala satajiduni insha Allah sabiran wa la a'si laka amra. So Musa alayhi salam said, if Allah wills, you will find me patient and I will not disobey you 
in any order. I will, I will be submissive to whatever you want. So, قال, قال فإن اتبعتني فلا تسألني عن شيء حتى أحدث لك منه ذكرى. So he said, then if you follow me, do not ask me about anything you see until I make a mention of it. Until I mention it to you. Until I myself talk about it. So this was the condition. If you want to follow me, you do not ask me any questions. They have that agreement. Fantalaqa. So they set out. Hatta idha rakiba fi safinati kharaqaha. They were walking. They wanted to cross the uh, from one bank to the other bank of the river. So they uh, they wanted to have uh, to go on a ride uh, uh, on a boat. So they the the people of the boat. There was a boat passing by, and the people recognized Al Khadr alayhi salam, so they took them on the boat and they refused to take a charge for that. They did not take money for them from them. They did not take anything in return. So Hatta Ida Rakiba Fisafinati Kharaqaha. Until they had embarked on the ship, on the boat, Al Khadr made a hole in it. Or he took a, a, a piece, a piece of the wood of the ship away out. So when he did that, Musa alayhi salam looked at him and he said, Qala akharaqtaha li tughriqa ahlaha. Laqad jiita shay'an imra. Musa said, the people gave you gave us a free ride, yet you have broken their, sh their boat. You have you are messing up their poor boat. The people are going to, to drown. Why did you do that? Indeed, you have done a horrible thing, a terrible thing. So Musa at this point thought of destroying other people's property he couldn't stop he couldn't stay silent so he said he talked but what was the answer so al khadr said to him did i not tell you that you would not be able to have patience with me you would not be able to stay silent? Sayyidina Musa remembered that agreement and he said, So he said to him, uh, call me not to account for what I forgot and be not hard on me for my affair with you. And he, please forgive me, I, I forgot. That's it. So when they went down on the ship, they kept walking. Um, so they set out and they proceeded until they met a boy and Al-Khadr killed him. Ghulam is a young boy who did not reach puberty, time, puberty age. So he killed him, he killed that person, he killed that boy. See, the Musa thought that the first incident was transgressing some property, but now he's killing a, a person. It's a bigger, it's a bigger problem now. So he couldn't stay silent. So Musa said, have you killed an innocent person with no reason for killing him? 
indeed, you have committed a clearly evil thing. Now, Musa alayhi salam said, uh, Al-Khadr alayhi salam said, Qala alam aqul laka innaka lan tastati'a ma'ya sabra. Al-Khadr said, did I not tell you that you can have no patience with me? If we go back uh, till Ayah 72, we, we have a similar Ayah. قَالَ أَلَمْ أَقُلْ إِنَّكَ لَنْ تَسْتَطِيعَ مَعِيَ صَبْرًا But here, قَالَ أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكَ إِنَّكَ لَنْ تَسْتَطِيعَ مَعِيَ صَبْرًا So the word لَكَ here is just to emphasize you. I said to you. The previous Ayah, I said you cannot uh, be patient. But here, I said to you, you cannot have patience. Qala, Sayyidina Musa, uh, remember it again. So he said, Qala, in sa'altuka an shay'in ba'daha, fala tusahibni. So Musa alayhi salam said, if I, if I ask you anything after this, keep me not in your company. If I object to anything, just um, let's depart. You have accepted my apology twice, and you have received an excuse from me to break this company now. I, I, uh, I want, uh, I will not uh, oppose you anymore, but if I do, خلص. It means let's apart, let's go apart. So Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, uh, uh, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam apologized and made it firm this time. فانطلقا حتى إذا أتيا أهل قرية استطعما أهلها. So now they both proceeded. Until they came to the people of a town and they asked them for food. They were hungry and they wanted food. So they reached a, a, a village and they saw people of the village. They saw some of the people and they asked them for food. Now, they as they wandered in the village and they asked for food for pe different people. For from almost all people. But what happened? So they refused to offer them hospitality. They refused to give them food. They even refused to give them a place to rest in. And remember that there is something here to, to, to notice. When someone asks for food, then this is the most truthful question to ask. He is in real need. He needs something to eat. But if someone asks for money, you don't know if that person is going to stack that money with other previous money that he asks other people. But asking for food is something, is a, 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 is a question that there is nothing to think about. He is in need. He is in need for something to eat. So what happened? The people of the village refused to give them money. They refused to give them a place to rest. And... While they are going in uh, around the village, فَوَجَدَا فِيهَا جِدَارًا يُرِيدُ أَيًّا قَضَّ فَأَقَامَهُ What did they find? They, they, they found a wall about to collapse. And Al-Khadr alayhi salam set this wall up straight. And they wanted to move on. So Sayyidina Musa said, 
You did something. You deserve money for it. We don't have money. We cannot eat. We cannot have a shelter. Why you didn't ask for money? So Musa said, if you had wished, surely you could have taken a payment for that. You could have taken some wages for that. Now, let's go a little bit into digging into this word, into this ayah. Yuridu an yanqadda fa'aqama. Yuridu an yanqadda, the wall itself was about to collapse. It was about, if we want to put it in uh, uh, the human words, we say to die. How can we say that? about things. Do you remember when uh, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, used to lean on a trunk of a tree and to give the khutbah to the people and then they, he, they built him a pulpit just uh, with a few steps so that he can stand on and everyone would see him. What happened to the trunk of the tree? He weeped. The trunk of the tree felt that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is, going, is not leaning on him anymore and he is a little, a little bit far away from him. So he cried. So even things have feelings. Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, went down and hugged that trunk of a tree. And he said, if I didn't do that, he would keep uh, weeping. He would keep crying until the day of judgment. Another example, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, used to hear the, the, the pebbles making tasbih while they are in his hand, in his blessed hand. So for Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, even in one of the narration, he said, لا تحزنوا على كسر إناءكم فإن لها أعمار مثل أعماركم. Don't, don't feel sorry that, don't, don't get upset if something is broken, if a big uh, vase is broken, if something uh, is broken, because these two have lifespan. The same, the same way as you people have lifespan. Something else, even animals feel that there will be an earthquake before a human being feels it, of course, without, without the machines and without this technology now. So even things have feelings, even things know that there is the, something is going to happen. So that wall was about to collapse, was about to die. You could have taken some money for that. Al-Khadr said, okay, that's it. This is the parting between me and you. You said if I ask uh, you anything else, you will part and leave me. So we, will, we are leaving each other's right now. You are a messenger, you are a prophet, and your words are orders. You wanted that, and I have to fulfill this. Now, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Rahmatullahi alayna wa ala Musa, law labitha ma'a sahibihi la absara al-ajab, walakinnahu qal, in sa'altuka an shay'in ba'daha thalatu sahibni, qad balagta min ladunni udra. So may Allah have mercy upon, upon us and upon Musa alayhi salam. If he had stayed with his companion, a longer time, we would have seen wonders. If he had more patience, we would have seen wonders. We would have learned more wonderful stories, more stories. But he said, 
if I ask you anything after this, keep me not in your company. You, will, you have received an excuse from me. So we leave each other. You are excused to leave me. I am not going to be with you. I'm not gonna bother you again. So what happened? Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says سَأُنَبِّئُكَ بِتَأْوِيلِ مَا لَمْ تَسْتَطِعْ عَلَيْهِ صَبْرًا Now that we are going to uh, leave each other I'm going to tell you I will tell you the interpretation the explanation of those things over which you were not able to be patient So this is what will happen. Uh, this is what we are going to uh, see next time, inshallah. I would like to end with a point that when someone dies, two places will weep for him. And, and that was mentioned in Surah, in, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَا بَكَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضِ How would the sky and the earth cry when someone dies? The explanation for this is that the place where you do your sujood on earth will cry because you are not going to, to use it anymore for sujood. And the place where your deeds are going up to the sky will also cry because your deeds will be, will, will be done, Khalas, no more deeds. But Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, says, told us that whoever has uh, So when someone dies, his deeds are stopping except of three things. Sadaqatun jariya, ongoing charity. Or some knowledge that he has passed and people are still using. Or if he has a righteous son or a righteous uh, offspring that would uh, just make dua for him. But what else? Let's say that someone does not have children. And he has not passed, he is not a teacher. He, is, he did not pass any, any knowledge. He still has something. Sadaqatun jariya, something that, something good that he has done to people. He might have helped even if with a few pennies in building uh, a masjid or a hospital or in digging a well of water for some people to use. Or he planted something that he will be uh, uh, that uh, people will be using or animals will uh, will be using. So this is the explanation for So the soul would know, would realize what it did when it was alive and what were, what the deeds it collected after death. So do not get uh, upset if you don't have children to, to, do not get sad if you don't have a ch children just to, to make dua for you after your death. Just keep, keep doing something that would benefit you from now after you die. Knowledge, knowledge is important. Seek knowledge and uh, give knowledge. 
Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, بَلِّغُوا عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَا Just spread anything that you heard from me, even if it's one aya. And you can have this ongoing charity even after your death. You, you might say, okay, I'm not a teacher. I would say having good manners is spreading the good manners of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we have to learn, we have to learn to be able to know what to do. Sayyidina Musa knew that there is someone who is more knowledgeable than him. He, he decided to keep walking even if he is going to walk for hundreds of years. We have to seek knowledge. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد السلام عليكم last time we started um, with uh, the story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and his journey to meet the one who is more knowledgeable than him, Sayyidina al-Khadir alayhi salam. And uh, when he asked uh, Sayyidina al-Khadir to accompany him, Sayyidina al-Khadir told him, you cannot, uh, you cannot be patient. You, uh, you, you, you don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, you are, uh, you have your own way and I have my own way. You might not understand what I'm going to do. So how can you have patience? And, and then Sayyidina Musa said to him, I am not going to ask you any question. So uh, I want to just to learn from you. I'm going to see what's going to happen and I'm not asking you any questions. So Sayyidina uh, Al-Khadr accepted that Sayyidina Musa will accompany him in their journey. And we saw that when they uh, went on the ship, Sayyidina Al-Khadr made a hole in it. He damaged the ship that uh, they used and that the owners were so generous, uh, they even did not take any money from them and he, uh, uh, in return to helping them uh, use their ship. Then we saw how uh, uh, they uh, proceeded with their journey and they met a boy and Al-Khadr killed him. And again, that was so not acceptable to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. And when he, when he told him uh, about it, he said, I told you, I told you that you can, uh, you can have no patience with me. Then the last thing that he promised, Sayyidina Musa promised him, if I ask you anything after this, keep me not in your company. So if I object to you anymore, khalas, that would be it. You have the permission just, um, uh, you have the excuse that uh, to break this company. And this is when Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Rahmatullahi alayna wa ala Musa, law labitha ma'a sahibihi la absar al-ajab. May Allah, may the mercy of Allah be upon us and upon Musa. If he had stayed with his companion, we would have seen wonders. So then uh, they went to, uh, on with their journey and uh, when they reached the town, they were so hungry, they, were, uh, they needed food and they asked all the people for, for food. 
they asked, they refused, they asked them for shelter, they refused. And uh, then uh, they were walking when they found a wall about to collapse. And Sayyidina al-Khadr alayhi salam set it up straight. So Sayyidina Musa immediately said, if you, if, you, if you have wished, surely you could have taken a payment uh, for, for, for what you did. And here Sayyidina al-Khadr said, this is the parting between me and you. So that was it. But before we depart, I am going to tell you the reasons the interpretations of what happened. قال هذا فراق بيني وبينك سأنبئك بتأويل ما لم تستع عليه صبرا. And this is ayah 78. So I will tell you the interpretation, uh, the explanation of those things over which you were not able uh, to be patient. أما السفينة فكانت لمساكين يعملون في البحر. As for the boat, it belonged to poor people working in the sea. فأردت أن أعيبها. So I wished to make a defect, a defective damage in it. Why? وكان وراءهم ملك يأخذ كل سفينة غصبا. As there was a king who was in front of them and who seized every good ship by force. Now, let's let's talk deeply about the ayah. So, a safina, the ship was for masakin. Masakin are what's the difference between al miskin and al faqir? Al faqir, both of them are poor, but al faqir is the one who does not own anything and he is in need, while al miskin is the one who owns a little bit, but what he owns is not sufficient for him. Okay? So those people, the owners, they were the owners of this boat, but they, they did not have enough money to, 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 they did not have sufficient money. So what happened? They were working, يَعْمَلُونَ فِي الْبَحْرِ Working in the sea. So for someone who works in the sea, it means they uh, lift up uh, some goods, people, they fish, uh, they, they try to catch some pearls. So this is the type of work they used to do في الْبَحْرِ يَعْمَلُونَ فِي الْبَحْرِ When he said, فَأَرَدْتُ أَنْ أَعِيبَهَا if we look at the verb aratu, aratu means I wanted to cause a defect on it. But later, when he says, وَذَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي We will come to that later, but I want to mention it here. <clears throat> he says, وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي So he made the action, the, the bad action, refer back to him. Aradu, I wanted. But later he said, I did not do it by, by will. So Allah ordered me to do it, but that's of adab, that he, um, he caused the, made the bad action, the defect damage that he did, he made it just for himself, that he did that. وَكَانَ وَرَاءَهُمْ Now, what does the word وَرَاءَ means in the Qur'an? The word وَرَاءَ in the Qur'an has four different meanings. And this is 
the miracle of the Arabic language. One word will mean several different things that are not even related. How? So in one of the <clears throat> places here, in one of the uh, ayahs, let's take this, this ayah. This ayah, wara'ahum, means in front of them. So the king was at the shore waiting for them. And this is similar to another ayah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, min wara'ihi jahannam, hellfire is in front of him. So the first meaning for wara'a, which, which is in this ayah, and in other ayahs here, mean in front of them. Now, the other meaning. The other meaning for the word wara'a in Arabic is min badi, which is after. And we see this in um, the ayah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَامْرَأَتُهُ قَائِمَةٌ فَضَحِكَتْ فَبَشَّرْنَاهَا بِإِسْحَاقَ وَمِنْ وَرَاءِ إِسْحَاقَ يَعْقُوبِ His wife was standing and she smiled. Then we gave her good tidings of Ishaq, that she is going to have Ishaq. وَمِنْ وَرَاءِ إِسْحَاقَ And after Ishaq, Yaqub. She will have another child. So there will be uh, another, another one after. وَمِنْ وَرَاءِ إِسْحَاقَ يَعْقُوبِ So after Ishaq, Yaqub will be there. Now, the, the third meaning is for the word وَرَاءَ is behind. They threw the scripture behind their backs. They did not care. So the word wara'a here means behind. And the last meaning for the word wara'a in the Quran means other than. Which means غيره in Arabic. فَمَنِ بِتَغَى وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْعَادُونَ If someone wanted something other than this, then those are the bad people, the transgressors. So here, if we look into this ayah, وَكَانَ وَرَاءَهُمْ مَلِكٌ يَأْخُذُ كُلَّ سَفِينَةٍ غَصْبًا So which, which one is better? When uh, Sayyidina al-Khadr said, I wanted to prevent that king from taking their boat by making it look faulty, by making it look defective. So he made a hole or he, he uh, broke a, a piece of wood or something. Now, what would the result be? Those poor owners could benefit from their boat. So which one is better? to have a defective boat or to lose the boat by itself. So if Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam knew this explanation, he would have done the same thing to the fish, uh, to, to the ship. He wouldn't think that this is something uh, strange. Why did you do that? Why did you harm the people who benefited you? Why did you harm the people who helped you? So. This is what the meaning, the explanation of why the, uh, Sayyidina al-Khadr made that hole or made that defect in the ship. Then he moved to the second case. وَأَمَّا الْغُلَامُ فَكَانَ أَبَوَاهُ مُؤْمِنَيْنِ فَخَشِينَا أَنْ يُرْهِقَهُمَا now, as for the boy, his parents were believers. Now, look at the word al-ghulam. Al-ghulam is a young boy who, who did not reach the age yet, so he is not ordered of doing the uh, uh, salawat and everything and uh, the takalif. 
So he is not punished for any uh, uh, anything. So when he dies at this age, then he, he dies uh, as pure as he, he would be. Now, is it good for the boy to die at this age or is it bad? The mom and the dad were believers. And most of the, most of the time, Children are trials for their parents. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran when he said, إِنَّ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ وَأَوْلَادِكُمْ عَدُوٌ لَكُمْ فَحْذَرُوهُمْ فَحْذَرُوهُمْ Indeed, among your wives and children are enemies to you. So be aware. How can a child be uh, an enemy? A child can be an enemy when, when he is so demanding and the, the parents are not rich, then the father would steal some, some money just to give the, uh, his child what he wants. So in this case, this child was a trial and because of this child, the parent is going, the father is going to be punished. This is how the, the, the wives and children can be enemies. The same thing as for the wife. She would keep nagging and nagging and nagging for her husband. Get me this, get me that. My friend bought this ring. My, my friend got this car. Uh, look at this one, look at that one. And he is not able to do it. So what he will do, he will steal to fulfill the needs of his wife. So he is punished because of his wife who became his enemy. Now, Allah is saying, So this child, his parents were believers. And we feared that he would oppress he would oppress them, he would overburden them by transgression and by disbelief. So out of their love to him, they will follow him. So it's a lose-lose case. And we intended that their Lord exchange them, substitute for them. Better than him. Better, better than him in purity, in, in righteousness. And it's nearer to mercy for them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he made Al-Khadr alayhi salam kill this boy, he he transformed him from the kufr, from the non-believing state that he will be when he will get older, which will lead to Jahannam. So he transformed him from this, from this position to, to killing him when he was young, when he was still pure, and he entered the Jannah. His parents rejoiced when he was born. And they grieved for him when he was killed. If he had stayed alive, he would have been the cause of their doom. So we have to look at things not from there, not outwardly, but look deeply. Within each and every calamity, there is some khair. What is the khair in what's happening? We might not understand it now, but later on, we will understand the reason. Most of the times, so, uh, someone would, would beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something. 
And he would beg and beg and beg. And Allah, if it's destined, he will give it to him. But if not, then he will not give it to him. And later on, he would say, oh, Allah did not give me this. Alhamdulillah. It would have been a disaster if I got it. So we never know what, where is the khair. And that's why when we want something, we do not ask for it. We ask for the khair. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say, Ya Allah, if you know there is khair in this thing that I would deeply want, just give it to me. If you know that there will be sharr in what in this, there will be some evil in this thing that I would deeply desire, then keep it away from me. And give me something that I would be content with and it will have all the khair for me. So outwardly, what happened to the ship and to the boy is, is not acceptable. But inwardly, it was all the khair. Now the third one, وَأَمَّا الْجِدَارُ فَكَانَ لِغُلَامَيْنِ يَتِيمَيْنِ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ As for the wall, it belonged to two orphan boys in the town. وَكَانَ تَحْتَهُ كَنْزٌ لَهُمَا And under... And uh, there was under this, this wall a treasure with them. It was a treasure for those, for those uh, young two uh, orphans. So you remember that the people of the city were all so stingy, were all so bad that they refused to give them anything to eat. And under this, this wall, there was a treasure. So if this wall falls down and the treasure is shown, then those bad people of the city would steal this, this treasure. So the, the orphan boys will will lose their treasure. But when Al-Khadr alayhi salam built this, this wall again, he built it in a way that it will be good enough for uh, the, the two orphan boys to get older and then to get out their treasure. So doing this, Al Khadr alayhi salam knew how to pay back those bad people of this place, of this town, because he did not allow them to steal this treasure. وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا And their father was righteous. He was a good person. Now, look at this message. وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا This indicates that a righteous person's offspring will be taken care because of the good deeds of their fathers. And you always hear it. The, the uh, father was a good person. Allah saved his children. The grandfather was a good person. He saved his offsprings. And the word Abu Huma in the tafsir might be up to the seventh grand-grand-grandfather or grand-grandmother. So Abu Huma, wa kana Abu Huma saliha. The father was righteous and this is a message for us. We have to be righteous so that Allah will take care of our kids. We have to, to, to plant the seeds of goodness in our kids so that they will be brought up with goodness in their heart, with goodness in their mind, with, with goodness in their life. 
So they will be able, Allah will show them the right way to differentiate between what's right and what's wrong. So they can choose the best. Of course, this is with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأَرَادَ رَبُّكَ أَنْ يَبْلُغَا أَشُدَّهُمَا So, your Lord intended that they should attain their age of full strength. وَيَسْتَخْرِجَا كَنْزَهُمَا And take out their treasure. Now, let's think of the father, the father now the good father, the righteous father. He built the wall in a way that it will be good enough for a period of time that their, his children, his children will grow up until they reach the age and then get their treasure. Now, who taught him how much uh, of uh, clay he should add, how much of water he should add, how much strength the wall should have? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When does someone reach the age? When he is able to produce, to give the same thing as himself. When he is able to get married and to give a child at that time, at that age, we will say that he he got the age. Now, if you take a watermelon and you break it, so it might be either red and delicious and uh, very sweet or it might be um, yellowish or any other color that's not so so ripe and uh, it will not taste good when will it be good and tasty red it will be like this when it is fully grown that the seeds inside are able to, to give more than what you are eating. So you broke one, well, you are eating one watermelon, but imagine how many seeds are inside and each can produce watermelons. So this is when we say, <coughs> Uh, so, why did, did I do that? Rahmatan min Rabbik. That was a mercy of your Lord. And I did not do that. I did not do, I did not um, damage this, the ship. I did not kill the boy. I did not fix the wall. Just from my own uh, um, from my own knowledge that i wanted to do that no so this is the reason why you could not this is the interpretation that i just gave you of those things you could not be patient with And this is what Allah wanted me to do. Now, if you look at uh, the words, arada, araddu, arada and araddu, he, he talked about the bad things, Sayyidina al-Khadr, and he said, I did that. But he talked about the khair, that it belonged to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as I just mentioned, this is out of politeness. So uh, this was the story of Sayyidina al-Khadir with Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. 
And we all know that, I, I, I mentioned this last time, that <clears throat> this whole journey happened because Sayyidina al-Khadr was asked, who is the most knowledgeable person? And he immediately said, I am. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, that you are not the most knowledgeable. There is one person who is more knowledgeable than you. Sayyidina Musa wanted to know more and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show him the way to go and reach and meet this uh, knowledgeable person and also to tell, to learn from him. So the whole story here indicates that the importance of seeking knowledge. When we know that there is some knowledge that we don't know and there is a lot that we don't know, then we have to seek for it, especially when it is sacred knowledge, when it is uh, knowledge about our religion. We have to learn about the fiqh of, of our religion. We have to learn about uh, everything that is important for us to do our daily, daily uh, to, to live our daily life correctly, righteously. We have to learn. We have to seek this knowledge. And the more we learn, the more we find ourselves how ignorant we are. The more we learn, the more we see that there is a lot that we don't know, that we have to learn. And the, the, there is a special pleasure in seeking knowledge. When, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants his servants to be closer to him, then he makes them ulama. And it's mentioned in the Quran. إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءُ Those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the knowledgeable people. So if you want to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, get more knowledge. Learn about the Quran. Learn how to read the Quran correctly. If you know how to read the Quran correctly, memorize it. Don't say it's difficult. Just have the intention and Allah will help. If you come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala walking, he comes to you running. Remember this, just have the intention and start the first step and you will get what you want. So learn about the Quran, get connected to the Quran, try to understand the meanings of the ayat of the Quran. You will find it way more enjoyable to, to read the Quran when you understand it than when you do not. And always remember, whatever you do to learn the Quran, even if it is hard on you, then Allah will double the reward for you. And this is what Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, الَّذِي يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنَ وَهُوَ مَاهِرٌ فِيهِ فَلَهُ أَجْرٌ وَالَّذِي يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنَ وَهُوَ يُتَعْتِعُ فِيهِ فَلَهُ أَجْرًا a person who reads the Quran fluently will have a reward. But the person who reads the Quran and he struggles, and he pays more attention, he pays more effort, and he and it's not easy for him to do that, and he still does that, he will have double the reward. Gets connected to the Quran. This is the secret for a happy life. It is, it is a complete system for our life. It organizes our life. It, it gives our life special taste when we follow 
the rules of the Quran. So the point is here, we have to seek knowledge. We have to learn. When we know that there is a halaqa of dhikr, it's our benefit to attend this halaqa. The angels, the angels will be surrounding this halaqa. The, the group of dhikr will be surrounded by angels and they, they will mention your name up with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who sit in a group of dhikr, whether they are remembering Allah, learning about Quran, learning about the Prophet, learning about the companions, those people are called friends for the sake of Allah. And they will be on pulpits of nur, on, on pulpits of uh, uh, happiness in the day after. And they will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, we used to, to meet with this person, we don't see him with us. And Allah would say, go get him wherever he is and, and let him be with you. Those are ikhwanan ala sururim mutaqabilin. Those are the br brothers and sisters for on, on beds that are next to each other, that are facing each other. So Sayyidina al-Khadr said to Sayyidina uh, Musa alayhi salam, Uh, they were talking about knowledge. And then there was a bird who came to the sea and he drank a little bit, a, a small drop of water. And Sayyidina al-Khadr said to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, مَا عِلْمِي وَعِلْمُكَ فِي جَنْبِ عِلْمِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا كَمَا نَقَرَ هَذَا الْعُصْفُورُ مِنَ الْبَحْرِ My knowledge. All I know, wa'ilmuka, and all you know. In comparison to what Allah's knowledge is, is the amount of the small drop of water that this birdie just drank of this ocean, of this sea. We have to seek knowledge to be of the righteous people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most, inshallah. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. We move on and to another story, which is the story of Dhul Qarnayn. What is this story? Wayas'alunaka. This, this, the next story starts with وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ And they ask you. And Allah here is talking to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now let's stop at this word. <clears throat> and look at the questions that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked in the Quran. The word su'ila or yas'al was or sa'ala. So from questioning, the question was asked to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 16 times in the Quran. 16 times. One of them was in the past tense. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ if they ask you about me, I am close. And the others are in the present tense. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْأَهِلَّةِ 
يسألونك ماذا ينفقون يسألونك عن الشهر الحرام قتال فيه يسألونك عن الخمر والميسر يسألونك عن اليتامى يسألونك ماذا أحل لهم يسألونك عن الساعة so many times they ask Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم about the hour يسألونك عن الأنثال يسألونك عن الروح يسألونك عن الجبال so they asked Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم 16 different questions some of them about about uh, what what they would spend uh, about the sacred uh, months do they fight in it uh, about uh, wine about gambling uh, about the orphans about the hour which was asked so many times uh, about the al uh, um, the uh, what they gain in in uh, about the booties is uh, they, they asked about uh, the ruh, the soul, the, the mountains. Each one of these questions was answered differently. 15 of these questions were answered by the, uh, by the word qul. They started, the answer started with the word qul. But one of these questions was answered without the word qul. The word qul means say. So one of these questions, If they ask you about me, I am close. So there is no qul. But let's have another example for the, 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 uh, the, the questions that are answered with qul. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْجِبَالِ فَقُلْ يَنْسِفُهَا رَبِّي نَسْفَ So, فَقُلْ Say, when they ask you about the mountains, say this. When they ask you about the orphans, say this. What's the difference? When they ask you about me, about Allah, don't say anything. I am going to answer them. فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I'm close to them. They just need to understand this. They just need to make their dua, and I will answer their dua. But for all other things, قُلْ And some of these ayahs say uh, uh, also does not only start with قُلْ, it starts with فَقُلْ So if you are asked, then say. So this is the questions in the Quran. Now, they asked him, we know that uh, Quraysh wanted to know if Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is a prophet or not. So they asked the uh, Jews, the, the scholars of the Jews in Medina, how can we know that? And they, uh, they told him, ask him about the, uh, the young men of the cave. Asked him, ask him about the man who traveled extensively throughout the earth and ask him about the ruh. If he answers these three questions, then he is a prophet. So when they asked him about the Qarnain, Allah gave him the answer. And, and we know that he did not answer Quraysh when they asked him because he didn't have the knowledge. So he waited until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the knowledge to him. So they are asking you about Dhul Qarnayn. Who is Dhul Qarnayn? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give us a name of this person, the one who travels extensively throughout the earth. So this means that it is not specified to a certain person. It might be any person because he is not given a name. Whereas when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the story of Maryam alayha salam, he mentioned her name, Mary. Maryam, he mentioned her name. He mentioned the name of her father. He mentioned the, the, her story. And the reason he mentioned this, her name and her father, and he, it, it was very specific because what happened to her will not happen to anyone else. It's specifically for her. 
when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Baraballahu mathala lilladhina kafaru mraata nuhin wa mraata lootin kanata tahta abdaini min ibadina salihaini fakhanatahuma. Allah presents an example of those who disbelieved. The wife the wife of Nuh and the wife of Lut we know Nuh and Lut were, were messengers. They were under two of our righteous servants, but they betrayed them. So those prophets did not avail them at all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we know the name? No. Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mention the name of the wife of Nuh or the wife of Lut No. It can be any wife who objects her husband, it can be any wife who objects the message, it can be any wife, it can be any person. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Sayyidina Zayd in the Quran, he mentioned him by name and he is the only companion who was, whose name was mentioned in the Quran. So we have the name. And this incident is about Zayd himself only. But here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not mention the name. So they asked Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu about the story, about the time, what happened. So was he named Dhul Qarnayn because he had a, a crown and his crown had two horns? Or because he he got he traveled so to the east until he got into the sunset uh, sunrise uh, area, or to the uh, west and and he got to the sunset area. Some people say he is Alexander the Great, but that's not possible because the ayahs talk about a righteous person. Insan or mu'min, a believer, and Alexander the Great was not a believer. He was the uh, the student of Aristotle, the uh, philosopher. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala made it general. Why? Because this is what the any ruler who is, who is who has the power of overcoming, pe of, uh, of ruling people, he has certain descriptions that he should fall, fall into. So don't ask about the name. If Allah wants us to know the name, he would have mentioned it. So what happens? قُلْ سَأَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ ذِكْرَةً When they ask you about the Qarnayn, say, I shall say, recite to you something that is mentioned in the Qur'an. And we know that's mentioned in the Quran from the word dhikra. Dhikra means a story that was mentioned in the Quran and that it will be preserved until the day after. So here is uh, this story that men that's mentioned in the Quran. This story indicates and tells us that every good thing is going to last till the day of judgment. So inshallah, we will be stopping here. And next time we will go in, we will uh, look in at the story of Dhul Qarnayn. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العرش عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نور على نور الموصوف بالتقدم والأولية سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم everybody we uh, we are now إن شاء الله going to talk about the story of uh, the القرنين and we know that Allah سبحانه وتعالى 
has mentioned this story and he did not give us a name of Dhul Qarnayn. And the reason, as we mentioned last time, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to make this story general. Because if he gives a name, then it would be just for that person. When he talked about the story of uh, Sayyida Maryam alayha salam and Sayyidina Isa, he, he mentioned Sayyida Maryam and he mentioned Maryam ibnata Imran. He mentioned her, he mentioned her father. It, because this story is just about Sayyida Maryam alayha salam. And no one else in this dunya will have the same thing that happened to a Sayyida Maryam. Whereas when he mentioned, let's say, for example, the story of the people of the cave. So he did not give the names for those, uh, for those young men who uh, resorted to the cave just to seek shelter and to uh, be away from... Uh, uh, to be away from uh, the tyrant king. So they fled away with their religion, with their faith. They didn't want to be under the uh, oppression of that king because they knew that he will either uh, kill them or he will force them to go back away from their religion. So we don't have a name for this group. And this group can be any person in this dunya who runs away with uh, just uh, to a land just to practice his religion without any fear. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does the same thing. And we are on ayah 83 now when uh, the people of Quraysh ask Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the uh, story, what is tell us about the story of Dhul Qarnayn? Who is this person? So they wanted to know if Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is a real messenger or if he is just claiming to be a messenger. So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for the story because he doesn't know it. And when, uh, uh, and when someone does not know anything, he should not just try to say any, any words just to give an answer. No. Ask Ask the people who know if you do not know the answer for a question that you were asked. Do not say anything just because you want to say something. Let people have the idea that you do not know instead of saying something that is a lie or that is not right. So what was uh, the answer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? قُلْ سَأَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْهُ ذِكْرَ I, I shall recite to you something that is mentioned in the Qur'an. Dhikra is a story that is mentioned in the Qur'an. So what is this story? Who is Dhul Qarnayn? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Inna makkanna lahu fil ardi wa atainahu min kulli shay'in sabara. Verily, we established him in the earth and we gave him the means of everything. The word makkanna uh, means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him the, the, the ability to do everything. And he has given him the means that will help him do everything. So this was what Makanna means. So what happened is that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given Sayyidina, uh, has given Dhul Qarnayn everything that he needs. مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ سَبَبًا سَبَبًا So Allah gave him the knowledge of, uh, of things around him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the word Makkana in another, in another surah when he talked about Sayyidina Yusuf when he said إِنَّا مَكَّنَّا لِيُوسُفَ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَتَبَوَّءُ مِنْهَا حَيْثُ يَشَاءُ 
And thus we established Joseph in the land to settle therein wherever he willed. So he gave him the power, he gave him the ability, he gave him the knowledge that he will be using when he is uh, uh, any, anywhere he wanted to go, anywhere he wanted to uh, settle in. So Sebaba is the, what, what you, what would lead you to get to your goal. This is the Sebab. And here, when we when we hear this ayah, inna makna lahu fi al-ardi wa atainahu min kulli shayin sababa, so he had dominion over the east and the west. Fi al-ard, in the earth, all over, wherever, anytime, anywhere. So he had dominion over the east and the west, and on everything. And Allah subhanahu wa taala. Uh, uh, everything gave him everything. Everything was submitted to him. So what happened? He followed the way. He traveled around the earth. So he did not just leave the, the reasons and go to, to his goal. No, he, he used all the reasons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. حتى إذا بلغ مغرب الشمس وجدها تغرب في عين حمية. So what happened? Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, until he, he, he walked, until he reached the setting place of the sun. So, when you reach the setting place, then it means that you are coming from the east. So when we, let's say for example, we are here in, uh, uh, in, in a city, in any city. I'm not gonna name cities, but when we are in a city and we look at the horizon, we see that the sun is setting. But the, does this mean that the sun خلص, went away? No, it's rotating to another place where it is shining, where it is sunlight for other people. So how, how, how can we understand this? If, if the sun is setting on people at different times, then there are people now are praying sunset, Salat al-Maghrib. And the sun is setting, uh, uh, is rising to the other people who it went to, then those people are praying Fajr. And in between these two places, there are people praying Zuhr, Asr, Isha, and so on. So what happens is that at the same time, there are people doing pray all, all types of prayers. At the same minute, some people are praying Fajr, some people are praying Isha, some people are praying Zuhr, some people are praying Maghrib. So at the same time, and this happens every single minute. So what does this mean? Ya zamanu wa fika kullu zaman. So we are talking about time when all people are doing different prayers. And that's why the people are always remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People are always performing salah. People are always doing adhan. And the, the, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there all the time. Now, he reached the place where the sun sets. So he can see the sunsets. Uh, the, the sun, uh, uh, the sun sets, yes. So he took a route and followed it until he reached the furthest point that could be reached in the direction of the sun setting. 
and which is the west of the earth. So what happened? What did he find there? وَجَدَهَا تَغْرُبُ فِي عَيْنٍ حَمِئَةٍ So he found there's no more land. So he saw that the sun as if it, as if is setting in the sea, into the sea. It's diving into the sea. So he found it. Uh, he saw that as if the sun was setting into the ocean. But we know that the, never, uh, that the sun never sets into the ocean. The sun never leaves its path. So what happened over there at that place? وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا قَوْمًا so there he found, uh, at, uh, near there, he found a group of people. He found a nation. So what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell the Qarnayn? قُلْنَا يَا ذَا الْقَرْنَيْنِ إِمَّا أَن تُعَذِّبَ وَإِمَّا أَن تَتَّخِذَ فِيهِمْ حُسْنًا يَا ذَا الْقَرْنَيْنِ Either you punish them or you treat them with kindness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Dhul Qarnayn the power over those people. And he gave him the choice. Imma and tu'adhiba, you can punish them, you can kill them, you can do whatever you want. Aw tattakhida fihim husna. Or you can do something good for them. This is something that we need to keep in mind. When you have the power over some, some people, you can either be oppressor or you can be a kind, a kind person. Even if they are bad, and even if you have the ability to punish them, just wait. Just look at what Sayyidina, uh, what Dhul Qarnayn said. He said, قَالَ أَمَّا مَنْ ظَلَمَ فَسَوْفَ نُعَذِّبُهُ ثُمَّ يُرَدُّ إِلَى رَبِّهِ فَيُعَذِّبُهُ عَذَابًا نُكْرَ So he divided those people into two groups. As for, for him who does wrong, we shall punish him. فَسَوْفَ and in the Arabic language, the word sofa means that I will do the work I want to do, but in the future, not immediately. So what does this, what does this mean? That Dhul Qarnayn, Dhul Qarnayn was a very just person. So his faith and justice became apparent when he replied this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالَ أَمَّا مَنْ ظَلَمَ فَسَوْفَ نُعَذِّبُهُ We will punish, we will punish him, but later. Why? Because sawfa means he is going to give him a chance. Because that person, when he listens to what he is going to say, to what Dhul Qarnayn is going to say, and what Dhul Qarnayn is going to say is that he wants to just tell them, he wants to advise them, he wants to tell them the truth, he wants to tell them about the day after, he wants he want just for them to be guided. He wants them to, to know what is what are they required to do in this dunya. So he gives them a chance to understand and to go back away from their transgression, to repent. So we have to be like that. Give people chances. Give people chances. They might regret. They might come back to you. They might say, oh, we, we did something bad and, and we are sorry that we have done this bad thing. So they will ask for your forgiveness. And the more good manners you have towards people, 
the better that, the better way they will treat you. Because they will realize how you did not treat them the same way that they, they did to you. And this is not easy. When Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told Sayyidina Abu Huraira, he told him, Ya Abu, ya Abu Huraira alayka bi husni al You have to have good manners. And one of the ways that one of the good manners that he explained to him was to forgive those who oppressed you. Give a chance to others. Because people are born on fitra, on what is good. So if you show them good, they cannot show you bad. So, we shall, we shall give a chance to people, but those who, who uh, insisted on their position, those who insisted on their transgression, then we shall punish, punish that person. And then he will be brought back into his Lord, who will punish him with a terrible torment. The word zalama uh, is so vast, has so many ways of being uh, a volume. There are so many ways to be a volume and oppressor. So the worst zulm, the worst oppressing is to oppress your own self. And someone oppresses his own self when he associate another God to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for, and then another way is to oppress people. Another way is to oppress the, uh, those who are weak. And you normally do not oppress those who are more powerful than you, you cannot. It's the same as the animal kingdom. The, the, the stronger will eat the, will eat the weaker. But what does, what does he go on and say? But as for him who believes and follow us in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَلَهُ جَزَاءَنِ husna. He shall have the best reward. He will have the reward in dunya, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will highly reward him in the akhirah, in the day after. So why do we have uh, this type of justice? Imagine that there are people who do not believe in the day after and who do not believe in punishment after death. So no matter how, you, how much you talk to them about it, they will not believe and there is nothing to prevent them to do any bad thing, any harm to others, because they don't believe in punishment after death. They don't believe in life after death. So, so they would do all the bad things they think of in this dunya, but, if we do not have a justice system, then what will happen to our uh, society? It will be filled up with chaos. Because those who do not believe in the akhirah, there is nothing to prevent them from doing any bad thing if they do not believe in punishment, at least in this dunya. He knows that if he kills someone, he will go to jail, he will be killed then that will prevent him at least from killing. So there will be restrictions. There will be a chaos prevention here. So this is why there is punishment in dunya and then the biggest punishment in the akhirah. The same way, reward in dunya, then the highest 
the amazing, the highest, most amazing reward in the Akhira. And those non-believers will not understand this until they die. Because when they die, they will know where their final destination will be. They will realize that how bad thing they did to themselves when they transgressed the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that time, they would realize that they are losers. But those who were good, فَلَهُ جَزَاءً الْحُسْنَ وَسَنَقُولُ لَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِنَا يُسْرًا So for those good people, we shall speak to, uh, to them words of kindness. If your child does something good, you just encourage him to do more. You just say, bravo, that's good. Uh, my good boy, look at you. This is something good you did. So you say good words. The more good words you say to your child, the better actions he will do. The better good deeds he will do. It will encourage him to do, to do more. When uh, students graduate from school, they do, they, they have a party for them. They have them wear the gown and they have wear them wear and, and then they will throw their hat up and that's, that's a kind of encouragement. Everyone, everyone will congratulate them. وَسَنَقُولُ لَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِنَا يُسْرًا Words of kindness with open hearts. And it is said that one of the things that you will not feel sorry if you do not say is the bad word. And what you can, uh, what you can say, the words of kindness, they will be, they will be directed directly to the heart. Words of goodness, words of kindness. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-kalimatu tayyibatu sadaqa. The good word is a charity. So now, this was the first group that Dhul Qarnayn met. Thumma atba'a sababa. Then he followed another way. حتى إذا بلغ مطلع الشمس. Now until he when uh, he came to the rising place of the sun. So what happened? وجدها تطلع على قوم لم نجعل لهم من دونها سترة. He found the sun rising on people on a nation for whom Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had provided no shelter against the sun. So sitra means a barrier, a shelter. So what can we understand here? So many options that those people uh, uh, do not wear any clothes. So there is nothing that uh, would uh, prevent the sun uh, rays from getting directly into them. Or there are people who uh, do not have any houses to prevent them or any buildings or trees to shelter them from the heat of the sun. And uh, the Arabic word for, those uh, for this type of people is dahun, dahun. So they don't have anything to prevent them from uh, heat, the heat of the sun, or even from the from the cold. Um, or uh, the he might found he might have met people whom the uh, sun would rise for a long time. So the day is so long. 
We don't know what Dhul Qurnayn did here. Allah did not mention anything. He's, Allah said that this is what he found. So someone can imagine that being a good person, Dhul Qarnayn, he might have helped those people. كَذَلِكَ وَقَدْ أَحَقْنَا بِمَا لَدَيْهِ خُبْرًا So it was, and we know all about him. This means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew everything about him. He knew everything about his army, about the Qurnayn, about, about everything that he does. So nothing was hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا يخفى عليه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء. Truly nothing is hidden from Allah in the earth or in the skies. And this is an important message. Nothing is hidden from Allah. Raise your children to always have the company of Allah with them. Even when they are alone, Allah is with them. And that will make them know the right way that will make them differentiate between what can I do, what can I not do. Even if there is no one watching them, they will have the sense, their inner, inner sight will be awakened because they know that Allah is over watching them. They know that whatever they say, Allah knows. They know that whatever they do, Allah knows. They know that what, whatever they look at, Allah knows. They, they know that wherever they go, Allah knows. So Allah knows everything about everybody. And on the day of judgment, he's going to pass the, the records on to people. And people will be so surprised how the records have every single thing they have done, they have thought of, they have uh, imagined, they have uh, everything, everything. وَيَقُولُونَ مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا How come that this book does not leave anything small or big unless it is recorded? Then Dhul Qarnayn followed another way. So he traveled from the east of the earth until he reached the, a place where between the two mountains. And so this was, these two mountains were next to each other and there is a valley in between. So there is a hole in between the, the two mountains. The word said is a barrier. You put a said between two things. This said, this barrier might be natural, like a mountain, or it might be uh, an, uh, a human made, like a, a dam, for example. So, between these two mountains, there was a big hole. There was a valley that this this uh, place, something bad was there. What happened? So there, the Qarnayn found people, found nation, found a nation there. And those people, 
They could not understand a word. They could not speak a word. There was, they, and it's, there was no, he, no hope to teach them to speak a word. But there was a conversation between Dhul Qarnayn and these people. So how, how, can you, how can someone understand a person who cannot speak? So th this is the way that people use to understand uh, a person who cannot speak, uh, dumb per per people, and it is the, uh, the sign, they understand them by sign, now we call it sign language, but there at that time, they would understand them by the signs they would make and by uh, uh, just, you look at a person, if he is angry, he will put his uh, hands on his uh, tummy and he will, he will, he, 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 will uh, 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 he will mention, he will point to his uh, mouth that he wants to eat, he is, you will understand. So Dhul Qarnayn understood the conversation of those people just by sign. The sign that refers to something said. So what did they say to him? And in the same way, he answered them and he talked to them in the same way that they were talking, by signs. Qalu, ya dal qarnayn. Now they, they were seeking his help. They were presenting their problem and they want him to help. <inaudible> they said, O oh, Dhul verily Gog and Magog are doing great mischief in the land. They're very bad people. They harm us, they kill us, they, uh, they do so many things, so many bad things to us. فَهَلْ نَجْعَلُ لَكَ خَرْجًا عَلَىٰ أَنْ تَجْعَلَ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَهُمْ سَدَّةً Shall we pay you a, a, a big amount of money? Shall we give you a big reward so that you create a barrier between us and them, between Gog and Magog and between us? So, why? They are, those are bad people. Those are mufsiduna fil ard. So they were hitting them. They were giving them hard times. They were, they were doing bad things for them. So what was his answer? Qala ma makkanni fihi rabbi khair. He said that. Allah has given me a lot. I'm so powerful, I'm so rich. So that which my Lord has established me is better than your tribute. The power and the authority that Allah has given me is better than what you are going to give me. I am not going to take any money, but فَأَعِينُونِي بِقُوَّةٍ Assist me in strength. You are a lot of people. Then I want you to help me physically. I will make a fill between you and them. They wanted, a, they wanted a barrier, but he is going to do something better. He is going to fill out this space between both of them. So, فَأَعِينُونِي uh, أَعِينُونِي Assist me. So, help whenever you can help someone who, who needs your help. And the best help you can provide is to do it before someone asks you. So, if you know that someone is in need of something, do it before he asks you. It's, 
it's not easy for someone to ask for help. So if you do it, if you do the help before he asks you, it will be soothing to the heart that he was not put in that humiliating uh, asking position. So help people. And you can help people, uh, people in so many different ways. You can help by donating money. You can help emotionally. You can help by just listening to someone. Sometimes people, people need to talk and they want someone who is truthful to, 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 to listen to them and to advise them. There are people who would seek the advice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the biggest help you can give them. You can help people by teaching them something. If someone comes to you and he said, I need, I need, uh, I need you to help me. You can do two things. You can give him money or you can teach him something that will generate money for him if always. You can teach him how to fish and he can go fishing. So instead of giving him one time, you gave him always. So, different ways of helping people. And here, it indicates that the strong person, the powerful person, the power of authority, the person of authority is helping those weak people. And the way he did it, he did it free of charge. For the sake of Allah. Completely for the sake of Allah. When you help people, if you are not in need, do not take any, anything in return. Remember that your, your reward will be saved for you till the day of judgment and you will get it so much, so many times multiplied. So he told them, I am not going to make a dam, I'm going to, to fill up this hole that's causing you this problem. So the redim is to put something and then to put something uh, uh, over it and over it and over it until it becomes on the level of the, uh, of the, of the ground. But what he did is that he made it higher to the point that no one can climb. So, أعينوني بقوة Help me with strength and good work. So, what did he say? أتوني زبر الحديد Get me pieces of big iron. Big pieces of iron. What he will do is that he is going to heat this iron so much until it is uh, until it reaches the melting point when it reaches the melting point he will add to it melted copper so the melted copper is going to fill all the uh, holes in between so when the two sides, when the two mountains now are equal, equally filled, blow. So he lit the fire until the whole thing was burning hot. Now the iron is melting. قَالَ آتُونِي أُفْرِغْ عَلَيْهِ قِطْرًا Get me the, the, the melted copper so I can pour it over it. So we have the melted iron, the melted uh, um, copper on top, and it was high enough that no one can climb over it. 
And there was two reasons that no one can climb over it. The first one, it was high enough. The second one is it was so smooth and slippery, no one can uh, climb it. فما استطاعوا أن يظهروه وما استطاعوا له نقبا فما استطاعوا أن يظهروه وما استطاعوا له نقبا So Gog and Magog were unable to pass over it, over it. they were not able to climb over it, uh, over, to climb it nor they were able to penetrate it to dig, to dig a hole through it They could not climb it, as I said, it was so slippery. So what happened? That was how Zul Qarnayn helped this group of people. Now, there are so many, so many narrations that, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked about this barrier that, uh, that uh, uh, Dhul Qarnayn has made. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, La ilaha illa Allah, waylun lil arabi min sharrin qad iqtarab, futiha al yawma min radmi ya'juja wa ma'juja mithlu hadha. Woe to the Arabs from the evil that has approached them. Today, a hole has been opened in the barrier of Ya'juj and Ma'juj, Gog and Magog, like this. And he made a circle with his index finger and thumb. So imagine the circle, how small this circle would be. So Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu anha asked uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Oh, Ya Rasulullah. Will we be destroyed upon upon though they, there will be righteous people among us? He said, yes, if evil increases. And the word na'am iza kathur al khabath. So the word in, in evil is uh, the bad deeds of people with all its types. So... Uh, in another hadith, Ya'juj uh, wa Ma'juj used to dig a hole. They wanted to penetrate this barrier. So what happened is that they would dig a hole. So they would work from morning till uh, sunset. And when they are, they would dig and dig and dig, and the minute they are about to uh, have the hole, they they would say, go back, you will uh, make the hole tomorrow. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would put it back stronger and uh, way harder than it was the day before. So when they, they, uh, they will do the same, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would uh, get them closer uh, to when they, they, uh, they will be out of that dam, that day they will say, you will make the hole tomorrow. And when they say tomorrow, they follow it by insha'Allah. And on that day, they would be able to break that uh, down, that barrier, and they will get out to people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevented them from working day and night and day and night. They would stop. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not allow them, did not allow them or did not uh, inspire them just to go over it by some type of uh, a machine or anything or uh, a ladder or something. So that was not an option for them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stopped them from saying inshallah until it is the time when Allah wants them to get out.
So what happened? Now, Someone might ask, what is the difference between star'u and istata'u? The word star'u is, uh, if you look at the word istata'u, you find that there is a, an extra letter to the word, which is the ta. So the first one is the original word. And it means, star'u means, they know they cannot climb it, and they did not even try. But the second one, istata'u, they know that they can make a hole, but they tried their best, but they could not get this hole done. So, stata'u means they tried and they did not succeed. Star'u, they did not even try because they know they will not succeed. And this is the same as what happened with Sayyidina al-Khadr and Sayyidina uh, Musa alayhi salam when he said, wa uh, kayfa um, uh, let me see. Okay. And The same thing. One, you tried and you could not succeed. And the second one is you did not even try. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is saying, فَمَا اسْطَاعُوا أَنْ يَظْهَرُوهُ وَمَا اسْتَطَاعُوا لَهُ نَقْبَى So what did Dhu uh, al-Qarnayn uh, say? وَقَالَ هَذَا رَحْمَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّي So what he did here is that he returned, he returned, he said, this is a mercy from my Lord. So he placed the barrier between the people and Gog and Magog to stop them from spreading their evil. So he did something good, but he said, He made this good thing that he did, that Allah has made that. That's not him who made it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed him, has made him successful in doing this. So do not ever say, I did this, I did that. No. When you have something good, just return it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me the ability to do this good thing. Don't say, I did it, because I know how to do it. No, you don't. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the blessings you have and all the blessings you, 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 he gave you. Because you, you are able to do it because Allah made you able to do it. Thank him. So the, uh, uh, I think we, uh, we have to stop here now. Inshallah, we'll go on. Next time, it will be the 10th session of the seer of Surah Al-Kahf, and it will be the last one, insha'Allah. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahi rahman rahim والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك Today inshallah we will be having our 10 and last session of giving or shedding some light on Surah Al-Kahf We will be starting with
ان شاء الله بسم الله وتركنا بعضهم يومئذ يموج في بعض ونفخ في الصور فجمعناهم جمعا الله سبحانه وتعالى saying here in this ayah and we shall leave some of them to surge like waves on one another what does this mean another ayah another uh, in surah abasa really explains this uh, ayah very clearly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ شَأْنُ يُغْنِيهِ On the day, a man will flee from his brother, mother, father, his wife, and his children because everyone on that day has a matter adequate for him he will not be caring about anybody the only thing that he will say nafsi nafsi myself even the prophets would say nafsi nafsi allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, is so angry today no one is ready to help anyone. They just want to make sure that they are saved. So once Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, was seen and he was worried. And they asked him, cheer up, Ya Rasulullah. He said, كَيْفَ أَنْعَمُ وَصَاحِبُ الْقَرْنِ قَدِ الْتَقَمَ الْقَرْنِ وَحَنَا جَبْهَتَهُ وَاسْتَمَعَ مَتَى يُؤْمَرْ so he said, how, <clears throat> how can I relax when the one with the horn has put the horn in his mouth, knelt down, and listened out for the command of Allah to be given to him? He's ready just to blow. The, the hour is so close. The day of judgment is so close. And that was at the time of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 1400 years ago. So they asked him, Ya Rasulullah, ma naqool? What do we say? Qala qoolu hasbuna Allahu wa ni'ma al-wakeel ala Allahi tawakkalna. Say hasbuna Allahu wa ni'ma al-wakeel. We really depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is our only shelter. And we shall collect them together. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bring all people back for reckoning. And we shall gather them all. All. No one will be missing. We will not leave anyone behind. وَعَرَضْنَا جَهَنَّمَ يَوْمَئِذٍ لِلْكَافِرِينَ عرضا. And on that day, we shall present hell to the believers and non-believers. Here, we, we shall present hell to the disbelievers plain to view in this ayah. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن مِّنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا and Wariduha, there is none of you except that he will come to see hellfire. Believers and non-believers, winners and losers, those who obeyed and those who disobeyed, everyone is going to see the hellfire. The believer will know how he is he was lucky to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to do righteous deeds so to avoid what he is saying. While the non-believers will realize that they were unjust to themselves by disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared this hellfire to the 
uh, to those who disbelieved in him and in his messengers. In this fire, there are two types of torture. The physical torture, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُلَّمَا نَضِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ بَدَّلْنَاهُمْ جُلُودًا غَيْرَهَا لِيَذُوقُ الْعَذَابِ So in this fire, there will be uh, a physical torture that whenever their flesh and, and skin gets destroyed, then they will be replaced by another skin. So just to taste the torture. Whereas the physical, physical torture is the humiliation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, اخسأوا فيها ولا تكلمون. Stay there and you will never talk to me. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked about this hellfire and he said, أوقد عليها ألف سنة حتى حمرت وألف عام حتى بيضت وألف عام حتى سودت فهي سوداء مظلمة لا يطفأ لهبها. One thousand years, the fire was burning until it became red. Another thousand until it became white. And another thousand years until it became black. So now it is black, bitch black. And it will not be uh, put down. So. The nar, the hellfire, complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said, Ya Rabbi, akala ba'du ba'du. Then, uh, uh, so, Ya Allah, I have been tortured by this fire. The fire is saying, I'm being tortured by this fire. فَأَذِنَ لَهَا بِنَفَسَيْنِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave permission to hellfire to have two breaths. One in winter, nafasun fi shita wa nafasun fi sayf, and another one in summer. فَهُوَ أَشَدُّ مَا تَجِدُونَ مِنَ الْحَرِّ وَأَشَدُّ مَا تَجِدُونَ مِنَ الزَّمْهَرِيرِ So the, the day that is super, super, Hot in summer is a breath of the hellfire. And the day that is super, super cold in winter is the breath of uh, this hellfire in winter. And we know a zamharir is the, the highest point of coldness. This is called zamharir. We know that there are seven, seven doors for uh, hellfire. What about the other? And from up till to down, the order is the, the, uh, the names of these doors. Jahannam, Saqar, Lava, al hutama Al-Jahim, Al-Sa'ir, al hawiya so the lowest is al hawiya And once Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting with his companions and they heard a loud uh, noise and they, they were frightened, they were scared. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them, this was a stone that was thrown in hell fire and it took 70, 70 years until it reached its bottom. Now, what is the food? What is the drink of the people of hellfire? If they want to, to, to have a drink, they would be given boiling water. And if they want to eat, they will have uh, thorny plants. Their bed, 
مهادهم من النار لهم من جهنم مهاد ومن فوقهم غواش they have a bed from hell and over them a cover of fire why would they have this وكذلك نجزي الظالمين and thus we recompense the wrongdoers so the people of hellfire will not die and rest and get relieved and they will not live happily ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا they would wish to die but death is already uh, uh, was on the form of a lamb and it was slaughtered no more death so the highest torture of the people of hellfire is that they missed getting into jannah and they missed the meeting with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show the hell the hellfire to the believers, to the non-believers on the day of judgment, and he will bring it forth for them to see its punishment before they enter it. And this is by itself a torture. Hell will be brought forth on the day of judgment, pulled by means of 70,000 trains, each, will, each of which will be held by 70,000 angels. And this is for whom? For the peoples. would not look and they would not they would not hear so they were refusing they were refusing to accept guidance and they refused to follow the truth and they could not bear to hear it they would hate to hear about the message they would he, they would hate to hear sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam talk about it they have eyes they have ears but because of their uh, super hatred to what they will be hearing as if they are not hearing it sometimes you would uh, you would talk to your child and you would see he's not listening to you you say, why you don't hear me? He's listening, but he does not want to hear you. And they were recommending and they were talking to each other and they were recommending each other not to listen. So why they were, they were, uh, talking to each other and they were uh, asking each other not to listen to the Quran because they know that this Quran was in the Arabic eloquent language and they know that whoever is going to listen to the Quran he will believe in, in the Quran he will be touched by the Quran And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Jafiyah, وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ أَفَّاكٍ أَثِيمٍ يَسْمَعُ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِ ثُمَّ يُصِرُّ مُسْتَكْبِرًا كَأَنْ لَمْ يَسْمَعْهَا وَبَشِّرْهُ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ Woe to those, uh, to, to each of those sinful liars. They hear the, the, the verses of the Quran, but they persist arrogantly on their position as if they were deaf 
So Allah is giving them tidings of painful promises of painful punishment. So then do those who disbelieve think that they can take my servants instead of me as allies? So there were some people who worshipped other people and those were the lovers, the people, the, those who, who were worshipped are people who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ عُزَيْرٌ إِبْنُ اللَّهِ the Jews said, Uzair is the son of Allah. قالت النصارى المسيح ابن الله. The, the uh, Christian said, Jesus is the son of Allah. Other uh, as, uh, a group who went astray said, الملائكة بنات الله. Angels are the daughters of Allah. So those are the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom they love who they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but people have taken them as as allies they worship them instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قل هل ننبئكم بالاخسرين اعمالا so tell them shall we shall we tell you about the greatest losers in respect of their deeds? قُلْ هَلْ نُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ أَعْمَالًا الَّذِينَ ضَلَّ سَعْيُهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Those whose efforts, those who, whose actions have been wasted in this life. They did deeds, but their deeds would not count. Their deeds are not in accordance to with the prescribed way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would accept. And we all know that whatever action we do that is not pure for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be accepted. So, فَمَنْ كَانَتْ Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ لِدُنْيَا يُصِيبُهَا أَوْ إِمْرَأَةٍ يَنْكِحُهَا فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى مَا هَجَرَ إِلَيْهِ Whoever wants to do something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he will be rewarded. But if someone wants to, to do something good just so that people would, would recommend him, so that people would talk good about him, so he got his reward in this dunya, and later on in the akhirah, he would say, where is my, my reward for this action? And Allah will told him, you went to, to, to fight, but you wanted to, to fight so that people would say, you are, you are brave and you got that in, this, in the dunya. So you won't have the reward in the akhirah. And that's why whenever we do anything, any word, any action, any deed, we say, Ya Allah, consider this as pure for you. And if you have any slight uh, idea in, in your mind, or uh, is this pure for the sake of Allah? Uh, am I doing it just for the sake of Allah? Then you are really thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But some people do some actions that, oh, I want to give charity so they would say that I'm generous. Okay, they will say you are generous, but where is your reward in the akhirah? Nothing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying uh, those people What does the word balla mean? Balla means will have no uh, reward. How? It's the word Dalla, let's look, dig into the word Dalla in the Quran and we will find that it has uh, about five meanings 
and it occurred in the Quran in different positions with different meanings. So here in Surah in Surah um, Al Kahf, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying, uh, So their work, their deeds will not be rewarded because they got their reward in dunya. In other surahs, in uh, so for example, in uh, in Surah Al Baqarah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. So one of the two women would uh, forget and the other one would remind her. So the word dalla here in Surah Al-Baqarah means to forget. In Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will decree something. Whoever oppose, whoever will not listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to his messenger, then he is, he is a way of the right path. Another surah in Surah Al-Shu'ara, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَعَلْتُهَا إِذًا وَأَنَا مِنَ الضَّالِّينَ This is about Sayyidina Musa. When he when he killed that person. So he said, فَعَلْتُهَا إِذًا وَأَنَ مِنَ الضَّالِّينَ I was heedless. I didn't know that if I poke this man, he will die. This is another meaning for the word Allah. And in Surah Al-Duha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًّا فَهَدَى Allah uh, uh, saw you, O Muhammad, looking for the truth. And so he guided you to the truth. So there are several meanings for the word Allah. Here in Surah Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying their actions, their deeds will not be uh, rewarded because they got their reward in dunya. They thought they were doing good, but they lost their reward in the akhirah. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ وَلِقَائِهِ they are those who deny the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who denies the signs and the ayahs of their Lord. And they deny the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't believe in the day after. And that's why when they did something, they, when they do by deeds, they will not fear the punishment because they do not believe in the day of judgment. They do not believe that they will be resurrected after death and their scale, their uh, deeds will be scaled. They do not believe in that. And that's why when they did the wrong do, the deeds, they did not fear any punishment. They denied the proofs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established of his oneness and the, uh, those of the, uh, the truth of his messengers. They denied everything. They also denied the day after itself. And, and they thought that even if there was a, a, a day after, they will be highly rewarded. They were good, enjoying their life. Well, so they thought that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them enjoy the akhirah if there is a day after. So what will happen to those people? فَلَا نُقِيمُ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَزْنَ On that day, on the day of resurrection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall not, shall assign no weight for, the, for, those, for those people. They will have no deeds. And even, even if they have some good deeds and they hurt people, so Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, فَيَأْخُذُ هَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ وَهَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ so there, the, those who were harmed by those people, they will come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will, Allah will say, okay, go take from their good deeds. So they will take from their deeds. And when their good deeds are done, فَإِذَا فَنِيَتْ حَسَنَاتُهُ أَخِذَ مِنْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ So they would take, they would leave their, there is no more good deeds. So what will happen? People will throw their bad deeds to them. And they will be left only with bad deeds and they will be thrown in hellfire. 
So why wa why did why will they be uh, ending in hellfire? ذلك جزاؤهم جهنم بما كفروا. So that is their recompense, hellfire. And this will happen to them because they disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاتَّخَذُوا آيَاتِ هُزُوَا And they took my ayahs, they took my signs, and my messengers, they took everything for a joke. We will punish them. They mocked the messengers and they did not believe in them. They even said to Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, in Surah Al-Hijr, Ya ayyuha alladhi nuzzila alayhi dhikru innaka la majnoon. Ya ayyuha alladhi nuzzila alayhi dhikru. You who have been revealed to, the dhikr was, the, uh, the Quran was revealed to you. So they believed that there is something that was relieved. They would say, you are a mad person. You are crazy. So they will be placed in hellfire. They will be thrown in hellfire. They will be tasting the torture of hellfire. That torture which will be forever. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Now that the heart is trembling because of everything that was mentioned about hellfire, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will go in to change the course of their ayahs and he will talk about Jannah. Allah is merciful. Whenever he talks about hellfire, he also talks about Jannah. Whenever he talks about punishment, he wants people to know that there is a reward. <laughs> so verily, those who believe and do righteous deeds shall have the gardens of unfair as a lodging. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one of his hadith Qudsi says أعددت لعبادي الصالحين ما لا عين رأت ولا أذن سمعت ولا خطر على قلب بشر I prepared for my righteous servants reward that an eye has never seen an ear has never heard of and nothing would have been even imagined so everything will be amazing. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ati bada al-jannati yawma al-qiyamati fa-astaftih. I come to the door of the jannah. And I will say, I will knock on the door. So it will be open. Fayaqulu al-khazinu man ant. So the, the keeper, of, the door keeper of the jannah will say, Who are you? Fayaqulu Muhammad. I would say Muhammad. فَيَقُولُ بِكَ أُمِرْتْ لَا أَفْتَحُ لِأَحَدٍ قَبْلَكَ I was ordered not to open the door of the heaven except for you. And if we want to talk about the Jannah, about paradise, we see, we know that there are eight doors for Jannah. And when we talked about uh, hellfire a few minutes ago, we said that how many how many uh, doors are there? There are seven doors, but the Jannah has eight doors. Kullun minha, each and every door is assigned for an a righteous action. For example, Babu Rayyan. Those who are who keep fasting, they they like to spend their time fasting. There is a special door for Jannah called Babu Rayyan. Those those who fasted in dunya were who did extra fasting, who did nafil fasting, who did sunnah fasting, will go enter Jannah from this door. There is Babu Sadaqa. Those who give charity, those who help people in need, those who help the poor they will be 
entering from Babu Sadaqa in so many doors. And there are so many uh, steps in the Jannah. The highest is Al Firdaus. We have Al Firdaus, we have Adan, we have Al Khuld, we have Al Ma'wa. There are so many steps in Jannah. And the differences, there are so many differences between each and every step. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna fil jannati mi'atu daraja. There are hundreds, uh, uh, there is 100 step in jannah. Ma bayna kulla darajatayn kama bayna al-ardi wa al-samai wa al-samai. So the, the, uh, uh, the distance between each two steps is the same as the distance between earth and sky. Wal-firdawsu a'laha daraja. And al-firdawsu is the highest, the highest position in Jannah, the highest step. وَمِنْ فَوْقِهَا يَكُونُ الْعَرْشِ And above this, Al-Firdaus, is the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِذَا سَأَلْتُمُ اللَّهَ فَاسْأَلُوهُ الْفِرْدَوس So when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not say, Ya Allah, I want to enter Jannah. No. Just say, Ya Allah, I want to be in, the, in Al-Firdaus al-A'la. Allah is the most generous. Whatever you ask him, he will give you. So ask the highest for yourself. Ask the highest for your parents. Ask the highest for your children. Always make this dua. Ya Allah, we want al-firdaus al-a'la. We don't want any, any, any level of jannah. We want the highest. And we all know that no matter where a person be, even in Al-Firdaus Al-A'la, the highest reward that the servant would get in the Akhirah is meeting Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, is listening to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, is looking at Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. وَجُوهٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ نَاضِرَةٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهَا نَاضِرَةٌ there will be on the day of judgment people with radiant faces. They are looking at their Lord. They are looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Al-Firdaus is a hell in paradise at its center and it's the best of the Jannah, of Al-Jannah. So again, when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask for the earth of the earth. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا لَا يَبْغُونَ عَنْهَا حِوَلَا So in this al-firdaus, what will there be? They, they shall be there forever. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا So this blessing is going to be there forever. The, the blessing and the, uh, the reward in this, uh, in this paradise, in this firdaus, in, in, in all the, the steps of Jannah will be, will not decrease and it will not uh, uh, end. It will always increase. وَلَدَيْنَا mazid. We have more and more and more. In dunya, someone would work hard to buy a house. When he gets more money, he, he will add a car. And when he gets more money, he will get a car for his wife. And when he gets more money, he would get a bigger house. And he would get a mansion. And then, so whenever you have something, you want something that, a, a higher thing, higher level. But in, in Jannah, you will not need to, to work to gain. In dunya, you need to work. But in Akhirah, whatever you wish, you will get. Say, if the sea were ink for the words 
of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know that whenever Allah wants anything to happen, he will just say, Kun. With this word, all the orders will, will be fulfilled. So if we want to uh, record all the orders, then the ink of, even if the uh, sea was the ink to record all the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this ink will be empty. It will not count the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will not count the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Luqman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ لَوْ أَنَّمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ أَقْلَامٍ وَالْبَحْرُ يَمُدُّهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ سَبْعَةُ أَبْحُرٍ مَا نَفِدَتْ كَلِمَاتُ اللَّهِ And if whatever trees upon the earth were pens and the sea was ink replenished there, thereafter by seven more seas then the words of Allah would not be exhausted more orders of Allah more words of Allah nothing can count the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلَوْ جِئْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ مَدَدًا Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, what, um, لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي Because the water, the water of the sea is always in a cycle. The sea water will evaporate Clouds will be formed, sea will, uh, water will come down, rain will, will come down, and then the same thing. So count all the water, it will not count to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if we brought the like, the like of it as a supplement. قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيْهِ Say, O oh Muhammad, I am only a man like you. It has been revealed to me. So, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, I'm just like you. I am not an angel. I do not know the unseen. So when you ask me a question and I don't know it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals the answer to me. So all the stories you asked me about, I did not know the answer. And except that Allah told me the answer. Allah revealed the answer to me. So... Whoever claims that I am lying, let him bring something like this, Quran, that I have been brought to you, that I have given you, that I have passed to you, that was revealed to me. And I do not order you to do something that I do not do. There is an order for prayers, I pray. There is an order for giving sadaqah, I give sadaqah. There is an order for doing this, I do it. So this is a lesson for us. If you want your children to do something, you should be a model before them. They should look up high at you and see that you or yourself is doing what you want them to do. It is revealed to me that your God is one God. I worship him with no partner. So this is the right, the right path. This is the straight path. Don't go right and left. One God. 
and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessing. Imagine that there are so many gods and you want to worship each one of them. You cannot. And it has been mentioned in the in one of the surahs, Shuraka'u mutashakisuna wa rajulan salaman li rajul. There are partners who who have someone, the, the, uh, the employee needs to please each and every one, but they, they, the partners themselves, disagree amongst each other. Who the employee are going to, to uh, please? Ilahun wahid. Faman kana yarju liqa rabbi. So whoever hopes for meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever is waiting for this meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَارِحًا And look at this, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say, whoever hopes for Jannah, or whoever hopes to avoid uh, hellfire, no. لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ Whoever hopes to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, we do not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get into Jannah. We do not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we are afraid of hellfire. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he, is, he deserves to be worshipped. Because he deserves to be pleased. This is why we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Jannah is created. Anar is created. And we do not worship anything that is created. We worship the creator. Let him do righteous, that person who wants to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So doing righteous uh, deeds is the way, is the boat that you can ride to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we are traveling, we take some food, we take drink, we take uh, something to, to uh, uh, warm us, we, take, we, we prepare ourselves for the, for the journey. And now we are on a journey to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to get ready for that. We have to prepare ourselves for that. فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا And let that person who wants to uh, meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let him not associate any partner in his worship to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Will you do something? Do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not, do not do it and expect that people would say thank you. Even thank you, do not, do not wait for people to say it. Do it for the, the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't have expectations of people. If you do, you will get miserable if they don't fulfill your expectations. Keep your words, keep your deeds pure. Keep your heart pure. Nothing in our heart except the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing in our heart except the love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nothing in our heart except the love for the Quran. This is our sustenance. This what will help us when we have troubles. This what will help us when we are tested. Life is full of tests. If we have Allah in our heart, if we have his messenger in, his heart, in our heart, if we have the Quran in our heart, then this is what will make us strong when we need the strength. At the time of turbulences, we have power in our heart that will make us power that will make us powerful ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا 
there is no associate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in one of the hadith al-Qudusi, أَوَلَمْ أَخْلُقْ جَنَّةً وَلَا نَارًا أَوَلَسْتُ أَهْلًا لِأُعْبَدْ If I did not create paradise, if I did not create hellfire, am I not, uh, uh, do I not deserve to be worshipped? Look at all the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Eyes, we can see everything. Hands, ears, feet, we can walk everywhere. Just ima imagine those people who are deprived of some of these blessings. They would, they would give all their wealth just to get it back if they can. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us these blessings. Shouldn't we thank him for it? For that and this look at the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has connected the beginning of the surah with the end of the surah Allah has created everything good for us so what do we have to do we have to say alhamdulillah and if you go back to the first words of the surah it's alhamdulillah powerful surah Amazing surah, a surah that's full of light. And this is why Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَنْ قَرَأَ سُورَةَ الْكَهْفِ فِي يَوْمِ الْجُمُعَةِ أَضَاءَ لَهُ مِنَ النُّورِ مَا بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ الْجُمُعَتَيْنِ Whoever reads Surah Al-Kahf on Friday, on the day of Friday, there will be, there will, he will illuminate Light will be in front of him between the two Jum'as, the two Fridays. Try not to miss reading Surah Al-Kahf, inshallah. And now that we have gone over just, just so some signs of Surah Al-Kahf, just when you read it, just think of the meanings that you learned. Think of the ayahs, think of the stories that we talked about and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that now there is a higher level when you read to, uh, this surah, you are at a higher level understanding, you are at a higher level, level connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with this, we come to the end of... Uh, uh, going over of some of the meanings that are in this surah and of course uh, we need more way more than 10, ten uh, uh, sessions to talk about this surah but this was a very quick overview of surah al-kahf وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته